Good morning, everyone. Myself, Dr. A. Kartika Unitan, guest lecturer, Department of English. It gives me immense pleasure and privilege to extend a very warm welcome to all of you on behalf of IQAC team, St. Aloysius College, El Turut Trishur, who has clubbed all of us for the two-day national conference on quality enhancement of institutions of higher learning, transformational role of NEP 2020. Now, let us have the pleasure of listening to the opening remarks. With great honor and welcome, I welcome Dr. Chako Jospi, Principal, St. Aloysius College, El Turut Trishur, for the welcome address. Sir, may I request to have your session, please? Thank you, uh, Dr. Adida. Good morning to the August Academic Fraternity. St. Aloysius College, El Turut, Trishur, Kerala, is uh, delighted to host NAC sponsored two day virtual conference on quality enhancement of institutions of higher learning, transformational role of NEP 2020 on 28th and 29th November 2022. The institution is uh, determined to spearhead collaborative activities to enhance and sustain quality in uh, higher education institutions in the ever relevant context of uh, national education policy. The new education policy of India 2020 provides a new framework to transform the process of teaching and learning in India. It replaces the age-old national education policy, 1986. The aim of the new education policy is to make it ready for the future knowledge society by making higher education more holistic, flexible, multidisciplinary, and suited to the 21st century needs and uh, bring out the unique capabilities of uh, each student. All the transformational changes proposed in this policy will be achieved through building strong and excellent governance structure in higher education institutions. There is important role that has to be played by IQACs of uh, higher educational institutions and uh, it is this uh, thought that uh, that made our IQAC to go for this uh, national level event. This event is expected to deliberate various provisions in the NEP 2020 for enhancing the quality of teaching and learning in higher educational institutions and among all other stakeholders. This uh, two-day event will also discuss the role of uh, holistic and multidisciplinary education in en enhancing quality of teaching and learning in higher educational institutions among all important stakeholders. The two-day conference will have sessions uh, as well as uh, invited papers, and I hope it will help us to understand the accreditation and ass assessment process of NAC in the context of uh, NEP 2020. Let me come to my duty. It's my pleasant duty to welcome the invited speakers, delegates, and academicians and policymakers. Respected chief guest of this function, Professor Dr. Sabu Thomas, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Mahatma Gandhi University, Kottayam, Reverend Father Thomas Chakramakil, CMI, Manager of St. Delicious College, Reverend Father Arun Joske, CMI, Bursar and Faculty of Zoology of uh, St. Delicious College. Dr. Betsy Paul C, Head, Research and PG Department of English of St. Delicious College. Dr. Libizan KB, Coordinator of IQAC of St. Delicious College. Delegates, academicians, and uh, their friends and colleagues. A meritorious 
academician and uh, an administrator and an educationist, the chief guest of the day, Honorable Vice Chancellor of Mahatma Gandhi University, Professor Dr. Sabu Thomas is the most suitable person to inaugurate this conference. He is also a professor of polymer science and engineering at the School of uh, Chemical Sciences. His areas of academic research include polymer nanopolymers and uh, celluloid nanocomposites. Professor Sabu Thomas secured his PhD in polymer science and engineering from uh, Indian Institute of Technology, Kharagpur in uh, 1987. He is the proud recipient of several national and international honors and uh, awards, including the Fulbright National Educational Leadership Award for Excellence in Education and others. Professionally accomplished, Professor Zabu Thomas is the, uh, or is the uh, uh, vice chancellor of Mahatma Gandhi University Kottayam since uh, 2018. On behalf of the India Academic Fraternity at the, at the, attending this conference, St. Dorothea's College and the organizing committee, I extend a hearty welcome to Professor Dr. Sabu Thomas. Welcome, sir. I humbly extend a warm welcome to the president of this inaugural session, Reverend Father Thomas Chakramakil CMI, manager of uh, St. Delicious College. He is a, a person with a vast experience in academics. He was a faculty member of this college. He was principal of this college and also of uh, Christ College. And he was also a member of syndicate of uh, University of Calicut. I am extremely happy to welcome our dear manager, Reverend Father Thomas Chakramakil, to this inaugural function. Reverend Father Arun Joske, CMI, who is uh, the bursar of the college and also a faculty in the Department of Zoology, is an innovator with an eye for technological upgradation in the sphere of uh, teaching and learning. He is providing all the necessary technical and infrastructural support for the conduct of uh, this uh, two-day national event. I wholeheartedly welcome Reverend Father Arun to this uh, function. A researcher par excellence, Dr. Betsy Paul C, head, research and postgraduate department of English of uh, St. Delicious College, is keen on continuing with her contributions in the field of research and academic excellence. I am extremely happy to welcome Dr. Betsy Paul to this uh, inaugural session. The backbone of quality assurance of uh, any higher educational institution is the internal quality assurance cell. At uh, St. Delicious College, the IQAC is coordinated by Dr. Libison KB, who is assistant professor in the Department of uh, Commerce and who is also a research supervisor. He is the person who has taken all the planning and the pain for making this event possible along with the IQAC team. I'm extremely glad to welcome Dr. Libison to this uh, inaugural session. The academic fraternity eagerly waiting to be illuminated with the insights of the distinguished uh, speakers in the conference is uh, welcomed heartily. It's my pleasure to welcome on behalf of uh, St. Delicious College and the conference team, all delegates, academicians and policy makers to this uh, two day virtual conference, which is sure to open avenues for restructuring the higher educational scenario of our country. Welcome all. Quality is a process. It, uh, sust it, it's a sustenance is a challenge. Let us gear up and resolve to enrich the diverse educational framework of uh, our great nation. Welcome uh, to all of you to this conference. Thank you.
Thank you so much, sir. Now, next we have Reverend Father Thomas Chakramakil CMI, Manager, St. Aloysius College, El Turutrisho, for the presidential address. Dr. Sabu Thomas, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Mahatma Gandhi University, Dr. Chapu Jos, our Principal, Father Arun, Dr. Betsy Paul, Dr. Libison, the resource persons, academicians, the faculty members, and all attending the national seminar. St. Aloysius College is organizing a two-day NAC-sponsored virtual national conference on quality enhancement of institutions of higher learning. The topic is Transformational Role of NEP 2020. The National Education Policy 2020 is being implemented at the national level in many states. Kerala is still brooding over it, taking very limited steps at the implementation level. The universities in Kerala have not yet taken seriously the national education policy. An institution alone cannot take a serious move for its implementation. The NEP 2020 proposes that by 2040, all higher educational institutions shall become multidisciplinary institutions with a student strength of minimum 3,000. The affiliation system will be phased out. The types of higher education institutions envisaged are multidisciplinary research intensive universities, multidisciplinary teaching intensive universities and degree awarding multidisciplinary autonomous colleges. As per UGC guidelines, all affiliated colleges should become degree awarding multidisciplinary autonomous institutions by 2035, either alone or through collaboration with the nearby institutions in the form of clusters or by becoming a constituent part of a university. This is an existential problem challenging each of us, which forces us to enhance the personal quality and quality of our institution so that we may be accredited by NAC at a higher level, getting a good score. This is the relevance of the present national workshop. We hope that the participants can be motivated by the presentation of the resource persons and then in turn can take leadership in their respective institutions for a change. Thank you. Thank you so much, Father. Now, now I welcome Professor Dr. Sabu Thomas. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, uh, he will soon join with us. Now, for the felicitation address, I would like to welcome Reverend Father Arun Jos K. C. M. I. Barsar, Saint Aloysius College, El Turutrishu, for the felicitation address. Father, may I request your presence, please? Respected dignitaries uh, and speakers, and all my dear IQAC members of the college, and uh, dear friends, and as a participant, join together this program. I hope I'm audible. Yes, yes. Okay. 
indeed it's a great privilege uh, for our college and for all participants and uh, uh, in a particular scenario like nep 2020 we have already been in a transforming position we have we have been listening to this particular term transformation in different journal in different uh, anchor but this time it's very very important for higher education to think about to come together and join together and think about what is the outcome prospectus all these things of this NEP 2020 and it's all deliberation proposed by. So here we are in a transforming world. Uh, actually, that uh, entire program is being uh, becoming, first it was in online mode, then it is in offline mode, now it's in a hybrid mode. So the same way classrooms are shifted from just mere classroom gymnastics to other variant, uh, other um, new outcomes, like uh, going out, um, placement oriented programs, collaborations, international collaborations and all those things. So uh, our IQAC team has been um, very keen to conduct this program, a virtual conference, to discuss about um, this uh, entire program. What is the outcome of this um, transformation happening after this NEP 2022? Sorry, NEP 2020. So we are so happy uh, to conduct this program. Uh, first of all, let me congratulate the entire team, especially the IQAC team of the college. Uh, for uh, setting up or pitching up this entire program for that uh, entire stakeholders uh, across India. Uh, and um, we are so happy to ha have all these distinguished eminent uh, professors like um, Dr. Sabu, uh, uh, MG University VC, and all the dignitaries, all the potential speakers for, uh, for this next two days of this program. So I wishing you all the very best and obviously, this is an uh, this is a very uh, keen time for everyone who are really toiling hard in this um, what do we call higher education because this is a high time to come together and join together uh, for the most uh, innovative programs like how do we have to exist like this is an existential crisis sometimes but at the same time it's a challenging opportunity to come up with most effective tools and methods. Um, to bring the best from a student. As it is said, as Swami Vivekananda is always reminding that entire uh, population, uh, education is nothing but it's a tool to draw the best from a student. So this is our uh, high time to uh, draw the best from a student using the best uh, methods and technology. Let this NEP uh, help us to join together um, to come out the best and to exist as a most elite institutions in higher education. I wishing you all the very best. Thank you. Thank you so much, Father. Now I welcome Dr. Betsy Paul C, Head, Research and PG Department of English, St. Aloysius College, El Turuk, Trishu. Ma'am, over to you. Good morning. I hope I'm audible and visible. Yes, yes ma'am, yes. you are. Esteemed manager of St. Aloysius College, El Tooth, Reverend Father Thomas Sagramato, CMI, distinguished chief guest of the day, honorable vice chancellor of MG University, Professor Thomas, Sabu Thomas, respected principal, Dr. Chako Jospi, IQSC coordinator, Dr. Libison KB, the bursar and management representative of the college, Reverend Father Arun Jo, CMI, the August Academic Fraternity of Teachers and Scholars who are here to participate in this virtual conference. The concept of education has undergone drastic transformations in recent years and requires urgent attention from all directions and in all, <coughs> excuse me, and all dimensions. <coughs> NEP 2020 is an attempt from the Indian state to cater to this urgent need, whether opening up avenues for academic mobility for students as well as for teachers, or whether focusing on the significance of proper governance. The NEP has opened up serious and sincere academic discussions. It is commendable that the IQS of St. Aloysius College has taken up such a theme for academic deliberations quality enhancement of institutions of higher learning, transformational role of NEP 2020. Let us hope the deep research and the well brought out papers presented here will not just enrich this webinar, but also pave way 
to a greater understanding of the topics and add to the national and international scholarship in the domain. Further, I hope that such discussions will bring focus to the ultimate object, the prime stakeholder in all educational discourses, namely the future of mankind. And every word we utter here can have lasting implications over humanity's future. Especially so during these times of extreme change, I do hope very sincerely that the best futures for all will be visualized here. And some of them shall find their way to be blueprints for our pathways in the days to come. Thank you all the very best. Thank you once more. Thank you all. Thank you so much, ma'am. Now, I welcome Dr. Chako Jospi, Principal, St. Aloysius College, Trishu, for presenting the concept note. Thank you. Um, the basic purpose of uh, organizing this uh, two-day event was um, to trying to link NEP 2020 and quality enhancement. That is the reason why we approach NAC to collaborate with us by supporting the event. Quite often, we had a feeling that NEP 2020 is, uh, is in a direction that, that will uh, change the higher educational scenario of India, but uh, it's not getting connected to the uh, NAC accreditation process or rather quality enhancement process. So we thought we will uh, bring academicians and researchers and policymakers from different parts of the country to, uh, to discuss this uh, idea of uh, how quality enhancement can be achieved through NEP 2020. We were uh, happy to get uh, uh, a very huge response from different parts of the country. We had uh, um, uh, inquiries rushing in from uh, academicians and um, we were uh, extremely encouraged to go ahead. We got the energy to go ahead with, the, um, uh, with this uh, two-day conference. Uh, we have experts uh, speaking on various dimensions of uh, this, uh, um, uh, this, uh, this uh, uh, concept. And we also have uh, paper presenters as has already been uh, communicated to the, to the delegates through our uh, uh, email. Uh, when you look at NEP 2020, and uh, it's a transformational role of uh, higher education, probably you can see that the, this policy is trying to bring in policies or uh, um, uh, methods that are uh, so far unheard in the higher Indian higher education system. For example, um, uh, uh, though, though not a very revolutionary one, um, NEP is um, transforming our higher educational scenario. Our uh, chief guest, uh, Dr. Sabu Thomas, the Honorable Vice Chancellor of Mahatma Gandhi University has joined. So uh, on behalf of uh, St. Delicious College, uh, I extend a very warm welcome to Professor Dr. Sabu Thomas, Honorable Vice Chancellor of Mahatma Gandhi University, to this uh, function. Welcome, sir. Uh, sir, uh, sorry to interrupt, but we have our Honorable Vice Chancellor. So uh, I welcome Professor Dr. Sabu Thomas, Honorable VC, MG University, Kotem, Kerala, for the inaugural address. Over to you, sir. Uh, very good morning to all of you. I'm extremely delighted to be part of you today. Unfortunately, I'm not able to attend you in person, offline. Maybe next time I will do it. I'm glad that the college is organizing a very interesting program on um, uh, NEP and uh, how education could be transformed into excellence. So I request all my colleagues, students, participants to be very active. And we should, we should really implement the good aspects of NEP. Uh, NEP uh, gives us a lot of opportunities for excellence. Uh, my first request to all my colleagues, 
you have to really make our curriculum completely outcome based outcome based uh, uh, curriculum outcome based evaluation outcome based approach should be adopted the whole sphere of education and um, second important uh, my request to all my colleagues is use technology everywhere technology for teaching and learning process technology for evaluation technology for research technology for excellence wherever you can apply technology please do apply technology and you know credit transfer is a very interesting program of um, uh, i mean uh, uh, new education policy and government of kerala has implemented massive program and uh, for uh, strengthening higher education i was one of the committee members and our committee also suggested large number of reforms to strengthen higher education uh, in the state of kerala and we also i mean uh, look for international collaborations for example you know i'm i'm sitting with the shastri foundation leader from canada we are having a very active cooperation with shastri foundation so wherever possible possibilities arise i request the faculty members to be very active send the students for a conferences meeting and symposia and every academic program uh, should be i mean connected with some sort of internship then the students will get hands on program you see look at my campus i send all my students abroad all my master students spend one year abroad all my psc students at least six six months or one year abroad and we started joint degree program uh, tuning program double degree program many programs we started in mahatma university campus so i request everyone to be very active and learn the subject and transform higher education into excellence with all your permission i, I declare that this meeting has been opened and wish you good success and um, let us uh, work together university and college can work together towards excellence thank you thank you so much sir uh, now let me have a brief description about professor dr sabu thomas uh, professor dr sabu thomas btech phd frsc feur asc dsc ul france dsc ubs france is the vc of ng university kottayam he is the director of school of energy materials <laughs> and founder director of the international and india university center for nano science and nano technology ng university his research articles have 775584 citations with an h index of 125 he has supervised 115 phd's he is a chief editor of nano structures and nano objects by elsevier a fellow of the royal society of chemistry london a chartered chemist ckem frsc 2000 and fellow of the royal society of chemistry london frsc 2012 he was listed in the most cited researchers researchers in material science in 2020 he was a fellow of international association of advanced materials fiam sweden and was cited among top 2% scientists in india by stanford university professors thank you so much sir for the thought provoking address set a pl perfect platform for our speakers to deliver their presentations now let me invite dr libison kd coordinator iqac st lucius college elkuru prishur for the word of thank you thank you greetings of today honorable vice chancellor professor dr sabu thomas our dear manager or dr thomas chakramakil our dear principal dr chatur joshi our boss our own father arun jos acmi head of the department of english dr betsy paul c conference participants paper presenters my colleagues and friends today and tomorrow we are going to deliberate on one of the topics most debated across india now this is about nep 2020 and the implications for nep 2020 for the higher education in india and today this event you know, was inaugurated by honorable vice chancellor dr sabu thomas he joined us out of in spite of the busy schedule he has back in his office he addressed our gathering and spoke about the importance of nep and lot of changes happening in the higher education sector in india uh, from the bottom of our hearts uh, we are deeply grateful for you sir for your presence for your address to uh, for your presence in the uh, event 
So I thank you for your all support extended to this uh, today national conference. Uh, thank you, sir. Next, uh, I would like to thank our dear manager, our father Thomas Chakramakil, who is always supporting and extending every possible help whenever, whenever it comes to the initiatives of IQAC. Uh, IQAC is extremely happy that our dear manager addressed our gathering and uh, put forward his words of wisdom. Thank you, Reverend Father Thomas Chakramakil, for your presence and for your support. Next, I would like to thank our dear principal, Dr. Chaka Jospi, who has been supporting the IQC team uh, for organizing this today's uh, next sponsored virtual conference. Uh, he, uh, he was uh, there for uh, finding out the right resource persons. He was there for preparing the uh, proposal to the NAC. So uh, from A to Z, uh, our principal was uh, extending every possible help to the IPAC team. So uh, I uh, extend uh, our thankfulness to uh, dear principal, Dr. Chaka Josku. Thank you so much. Next, I would like to express my thankfulness to Reverend Father Arun Joske, CMI, Barsar of our college, uh, who uh, felicitated this gathering. And uh, he is uh, always there for uh, any advice whenever we ask for oil. And he is supporting us uh, every manner possible when it comes to the IKC initiatives. Thank you, Reverend Father Arun Jose KCMI, for your presence and for your support. Next, I would like to extend our thankfulness to Dr. Betsy Polsi, Head Department of English, uh, who uh, fel felicitated our gathering. Thank you, ma'am, for your support. And uh, Earlier, uh, she was the principal in charge and I had the opportunity to work close with her and uh, the, the, the kind of support uh, she is extending to every endeavors of IQLC is appreciable. And uh, let me thank you, ma'am, for your presence and for uh, extending all possible help to our initiatives. Thank you, ma'am. And now I must thank my team members of IQSC, especially Dr. Adida and Dr. Singhdo, Dr. Jijo, Dr. Sandhya and the rest of the team members for their support. Uh, the team behind this uh, conference, they take care of every minute aspects of the uh, execution of the conference. So uh, I thank uh, my IQSC team members for their uh, support. And I must thank conference participants for spending their valuable time uh, today, and they will be spending their time tomorrow as well. And I also thank the paper presenters who contributed their papers for presentations today afternoon. We will have a deliberate, detailed deliberations in two parallel sessions where uh, research scholars and researchers will present their thoughts on the uh, NEP and the how NEP is going to change the uh, higher education sector in India. So I thank all conference participants, all paper contributors. I also thank NAC for extending the financial support. Uh, we uh, applied for the financial support by, uh, two months back and we had prompt response from NAC and NAC uh, is uh, guiding us. Uh, in the uh, process of executing this two-day virtual conference. So I, uh, I uh, recognize the uh, support of NAC. I place on record our thankfulness to uh, NAC Bangalore now. And I, uh, I would like to take this opportunity to thank all session speakers who, uh, uh, who have kindly agreed to be present and to present their thoughts in this uh, conference. Uh, uh, we will uh, we will have uh, five different sessions in uh, uh, in, in various uh, time slots and various aspects of NEP will be deliberated. 
So I thank all session speakers who are going to speak today. Uh, and uh, the the second session, the, the first technical session would begin at 11.30. Uh, I uh, would request the uh, conference participants to be back at 11.30 after this inaugural session. So once again, thank you so much to all. Uh, have a great day. Uh, have a ni nice learning experience. May God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for proposing the vote of thanks. Now, uh, by that, we come to the conclusion of inaugural session. I hope everyone will resume with us to join for the first session, which will begin at 11.30. I request everyone of you to join us at 11.30.
I think Dr. Uh, Lena Ghane has joined, uh, ma'am. Yeah, Dr. Jose, I am very much here. Okay, okay. Uh, Namaste, sir. Namaste, sir. Namaste, sir. Namaste, sir. So, we'll start at 11.30. Yeah, sure, sure. I am there. Okay, okay. okay.
So once again, good morning to everyone. Uh, we are about to begin with our first session. Uh, so for the first session, uh, I would like to invite Dr. Jane Theratil, Assistant Professor, Department of Zoology, St. Aloysius College, uh, for the welcome address, as well as to introduce the speaker for the session. Over to you, sir. Very warm good morning to all. I think I'm audible. Yes. Yes. A very good morning, all the participants, all the dignitaries of the next sponsored two-day virtual national conference, quality enhancement of institutions of higher learning, the role of MEP. Today we are lucky to have Dr. Lena Govind Gahere as a key speaker of this session. <coughs> On the behalf of the entire fraternity of St. Aloysius College, as well as the MAC team, the uh, IQAC team, I welcome all the participants, academicians, faculty members, delegates of this national conference, and the resource person to this session. This session is based on NAC revised assessment and accreditation framework and its relevance in the context of national education policy 2020. Today, we have blessed with the presence of Dr. Lena Govind Dehane, Deputy Advisor of NAC Bangalore. She is a professor of physics with more than 22 years of experience in teaching in ACET lab tools. Responsibility as a dean of RPMO, Nagpur University, and worked as a board of studies director. But that she is the member of NAC Think Tank, the person behind many NAC activities, especially development, development Okay. Sorry for the technical glitch. She's a professor of physics with the teaching of immense teaching experience with 22 years. Her topic of research is superconductivity in reference to physical world as well as human life as nanofluids. She has worked many national teams, study membering unique studies of status of women in uh, 2019 as an opportunity to discuss findings of studies in the Honorable President of India. She has delivered more than 950 lectures on many national, social, technical, academical organizations, platforms, webinars, chairing many national sessions, etc. etc. A top academician, patriot, as well as personality of national state. She is a writer of more than 1,000 articles, poems, and many current issues in newspapers, magazines, 
and social media, especially in Hindi, Marathi, and English. Raising female and social issues on TV channels. On the behalf of all who gathered here, on the behalf of myself and the team of IQC of St. Joseph's College, I Thank you very much, Professor. I think there is some disturbance. I request the host to mute all, please. Yeah, let us begin with Namaskars to all. Let me share with my presentation. I think my presentation is visible. Yes, yes. Just give me an yes, input, please. Yes, yeah, I'm making it full screen. Yeah, now it is full screen, I think so. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just a minute, please. Let me adjust with... Okay, now namaskars to all. Uh, let me seek blessings from Bharat Mata first because this particular slide it is uh, giving the mandate for which we have taken birth on this beautiful uh, uh, earth and especially to Bharat. Sakala Jagataka Mangal Karne Jana Jana Meham Prema Bhare Vasundhara Hai Mata Sabaki Vishwa Banduta Bhava Bhare Vishwa Banduta Bhava Bhare. Vande Bharat Mataram. I am very happy and uh, pleased because St. Uh, Aloysius College, uh, Thrishur, Kerala, they are organizing a workshop uh, on quality enhancement of institution of higher learning, uh, transformational role of NEP 2020. I should not say it as a workshop because they have mentioned here as a national conference. I would like to welcome uh, all the participants over here who are eager to know uh, what would be their role when the national education policy, it will get uh, implemented uh, as a full. So here I shall be presenting the things. The line of my presentation will be, I would like to seek your attention to what is Bhartiya perspective of education and the present scenario. A few slides will be there. Then understanding various quality aspects of NEP, National Education Policy. Uh, then there are various NAC criteria, how we would map all those, you know, NEP quality aspects and how NAC uh, various criteria could be integrated. And finally, uh, how the institution has to get prepared for it for implementation purpose. And finally, we will do it together. So uh, let us understand basically the meaning of education. A question may come to our mind, ki how come we need to understand the definition of education even after 75 years of our independence? Friends, the implementation of NEP or uh, we can say the mandate of NEP is to make education to realize the person who he or she is. Then making the person ready by all-round de development and to make him or her to play the role for upliftment or transformation in the society. So the Bharatiya Drushtikon of education is Shiksha Vaha Hoti Hai Jo Vyakti Ko Vyakti Se Jode I remember the quote of Swami Vivekananda, education is not amount of information that is put in your brain and it is ruining there for a long, which is undigested because even after having the post-graduation degree or even after having pursuing the doctoral degree, people are not able to understand uh, what is a basic core fundamental concept and how to implement all these fundamental concepts or principles uh, to make uh, 
transformation in the society and how these principles would be applicable for innovation and overall national development. So education for human beings means that process by which the character is formed, strength of mind is increased and intellect is sharpened and as a result of which one can stand on one's own feet. Friends, in my uh, introduction, it was stated that I am basically an academician and for the past 22 years, I had been teaching and it is the same experience what you had. I have the same experience because uh, during, uh, you know, placements, uh, we get a feedback from the industry or the, uh, you know, uh, the companies that, uh, oh, your students are graduates, they are postgraduates even. Uh, but they are not having the employable skills. They are not having the knowledge which is required uh, for them to work in our job. So it is really painful because teachers are not just, you know, delivering the things, but we are all mothers and fathers. So whenever somebody talks about our children like this, so it is really to rethink, uh, revisit how we are delivering the content how is our pedagogy and can we make our pedagogy more uh, effective and more participative in nature so that our student can be well equipped to face the current challenges. So uh, basically uh, the purpose of the education is Sa uh, Vidyaya Vimoktaye. Uh, that means the education should liberate everyone who is perceiving the education from the ignorance or we can call as the bondage or useless karmas. So the purpose of education is to equip a person with all skills to live a better life, then to acquire the possession of self, then to liberate from ignorance, to help manifest divinity within and to inspire to achieve purpose of life as a meaningful life and not just successful life. There are many stories. I need not go into much details, but we find that a person who has achieved an highest degree and, you know, uh, uh, getting a great package, uh, still we find that these such persons are searching for the purpose in life. So let us make our life more meaningful. And I think the, uh, the core of the national education policy lies in this. Ki we need to understand who am I? What and all are my passions? Uh, what subjects I am interested in and making all those my passions and subjects of liking more sharpened so that I make my life uh, more purposeful and meaningful rather than just a successful. This picture yeah, talks a yeah, lot. Yes, sir. Yeah, your, yes. Slide, your slide is not visible now. It is not visible. No. Okay. Let me check with it, sir. Uh, I think I have presented it. Yeah. You could not see my earlier slides, even. Yeah, earlier I saw, we saw, but now the slide is not uh, visible. Can okay. you? I I will share it again. I will share it again. Now is it visible, sir? Yeah. Now it now it is visible. Now could you yeah. see that yeah. elephant yeah. and all yeah. are yeah. standing yeah. Yeah. in one yes, row? Yes, okay. Thank you for your input, sir. Okay. So the this picture sees and uh, tells us a lot of things, isn't it? In a class of sixty, a people with having uh, who are having the various capabilities, we are trying to judge them, trying to evaluate their intelligence through, uh, you know, uh, various subjects, various exams in the same way. So Albert Einstein picture says a lot, everybody is a genius, but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing that it is a stupid. So a teacher or the institution has to look into this aspect, wherein the capabilities as well as the geniusness in the uh, human being uh, has to be brought out and accordingly the exams as well as the, you know, uh, evaluation systems are to be designed. So national education policy talks of uh, these, uh, these, all these things. So all our subjects, see, uh, following the Western uh, ideology of implementing the things as an education, that more knowledge should be gained. But uh, are we really imparting the knowledge? 
are just or just burdening our student to learn more subjects uh, without uh, giving them a proper understanding as well as the importance of the subject what has happened we wish that uh, right from the pre primary education to the higher education a student should learn this student should learn that so due to this learning without understanding has overburden our student and due to which what we find that they are having less confidence they have generated a fear and they are not really happy uh, with even after being educated education has to be a joyful otherwise it is hopeless uh this is a picture wherein there is an optical illusion i know that each one of us we are seeing that these particular frames they are either moving in clockwise direction or anti clockwise direction friends this is a mere picture and nothing is moving uh, but uh, it is deceiving our eyes appearing uh, what which is not actual to our education system for past many years it has happened that way we are running in a race uh, wherein without uh, knowing what is good what is bad i am uh, you know uh, uh, now presently i am giving a keynote address to the people in kerala we understand the geographical importance of a kerala the society over there the requirement for the youngsters to acquire a skills in various job professions uh, it is different from from the bangalore or it may be different from the delhi so let us integrate uh, the education the subject the curriculum in a way wherein the students will find that whatever they have learned it has a direct application and they can seek job or they can have their own startup so let us not run with the ignorance rather be sensible we should look here and there hear feel read understand and be knowledgeable you are aware of this panchatantra katha i will not get into the details but this story tells a lot uh, we are aware that rabbit is a fearful animal and once he was sleeping under a tree and suddenly some dry leaves fallen on him and uh he started feeling when he saw in the sky he, there were many clouds black clouds so he thought of uh ki there are the clouds the pieces of the clouds has fallen and he has taken the whole jungle on his head stating that we are going to die come on run with us Uh, otherwise uh, the jungle is going to get destroyed without inquiring for what has exactly happened without going to the place where this uh, incident has happened investigating it the whole jungle started running after and finally we know that the tiger catch hold of all the animals and asked why are you running what has happened they said we don't know why we are running but somebody told us to run we are running finally tiger came to know that this uh, rabbit he has created this chaos and when they investigated and went to the place then they realized that only the dry leaves were there similarly to our educational institution we are running in a race what is our vision what is our mission we design those vision and mission even looking into the websites of other institution we nearly need to have an insight now rather than running in the race with an ignorance let us have a true perspective and this would be happening only if we gather the experiences of life now let me come to the nep 2020 the policy envisions the following key changes to the current system nep 2020 it uh, it envisions the education system in uh, which is rooted in the indian ethos and that contributes directly to the transformation of india that is bharat sustainability into equitable and vibrant knowledge society by providing high quality education to all and thereby making india a global knowledge superpower friends this vision is very broad and it will take time to reach that particular goal but one person one institution not uh, you know contributing for this vision will not make this vision successful uh, 
So it is very much needed that how the present curriculum that we are imparting with the help of university, if you are affiliated college, then with the university, let us have a common consensus that what and all subjects to be taught at various levels of education so that we will feel proud of our nation. Then uh, to make our uh, society uh, the equitable, sustainable, and to have a knowledge society, our contribution has to be there because one person missing will not make it 100%. We are aware of we are the academician and we know the mathematics. Even if you miss one mark, then it is not 100%, rather it is 99 point something percent. So, contribution of each of the institution in this national transformation is the uh, is important and i should say it is a mandate of this particular nep 2020 document the curriculum and pedagogy of our institution must develop a deep sense of respect towards fundamental duties and constitutional values bonding with one's country and one, a consciousness awareness of one's roles and responsibility in this changing world. See, two days back on 26th of November, we have celebrated the Constitution Day. On that day, we find that our Constitution, which is our holy book, I should say, uh, it is the book wherein it tells us how we should behave uh, as a citizen, how should uh, we, uh, you know, interact with the other individuals in the society? So all these values, as well as principles of life, it is instilled in our constitution. And this constitutional awareness is very, very important. So through various activities in the institution, uh, across the different criteria of assessment and accreditation, the institution has to take care that our students are quite sensible and they have adopted the constitutional principles. To instill a deep-rooted pride to being Indian, not only in a thought, but also in spirit, intellect, deeds, as well as to develop a knowledge, skills, values, and dispositions that res support responsible commitment to the human rights, sustainable development, and living and global well-being, thereby reflecting a true global citizen. Uh, the values are there. We talk of values. It is there in our literature, which is our guiding book. But still, sometimes while behaving in the society, we did not realize that how we are behaving. Yeah. So we as a teacher, I should say we are the gurus. And it is immense, uh, you know, responsibility of a guru uh, to guide the students, to mentor them so that their behavior is controlled uh, by the thought or the principles they uh, wanted to be. Uh, wanted to or they have studied in their education governance of hei by independent boards of uh, boards will be there having academic and administrative autonomy uh, it is very much required there will be the decentralization of the governance uh, which is there i will not get into much more detail i just give a passing reference that there will be general higher education commission of india then there will be general education Council, Higher Education Grant Council, then National Accreditation Council, National Higher Education Regulatory Councils. So these various bodies, they will have the various roles. Some will be the regulatory, some will be forming the policy, some will be accreditation, accrediting, and some of the bodies, uh, body, one of the body will be providing the grants for the higher education. So there will be a light but tight, what you can say, regulation. Uh, and But it will look into that all aspects of national education policy, it will be covered. The institutional restructuring and consolidation will be happening over here because this particular policy talks of multidisciplinary education. We are aware of uh, sometimes we are the affiliated college, uh, you know, uh, giving uh, a specific other arts or commerce or a science education. If it is an edu engineering education, only the professional courses are being run. And if it is a medicine, a medical college, then definitely the health science courses are being run in such colleges. But national education policies talk of integration of the subjects, or I should say the multidisciplinary subjects, 
So for achieving this particular goal, there has to be restructuring of the institution and few institution, they may form a cluster so that a, a, a student who is admitted to this cluster institution will be facilitated and uh, will be, uh, you know, uh, inspired as well as benefited to have the multiple uh, various type of subjects uh, as, as per uh, their choice uh, during their education. So the quality aspect here is a synergy. Energy is which empowers you. Synergy is empowering plus utilizing the en uh, energy in a proper fashion without much loss. So the interaction or co collaboration of two or more organizations substances or other agents to produce a combined effect greater than the sum of their separate effects. We are aware of that synergy is always beneficial and it has less side effects as compared to energy. Then it moves towards the holistic multidisciplinary universities and colleges with more HEIs. The research says that joy will make education meaningful to the stakeholder and will definitely develop the attitude of learning. So if it is a joyful uh, education, if the class is joyful, wherein a uh, student comes with a lot of questions, I should say jidnyasa. And then definitely uh, through the interaction and the guru is also prepared uh, to learn with students huh? because it is learner-centric education, NEP 2020 talks of, wherein the guru as well as both the uh, students, they are learning together uh, to reach uh, the final uh, you know, stage of understanding. Uh, so it will improve the performance of student. That is a guarantee and it is also our uh, you know, uh, experience. Then uh, across India offer medium of instruction in local and in uh, Indian languages. Uh, I only know that in Kerala, there is a Malayali being sp uh, spoken. There may be many uh, other languages also. But see, uh, if the students are being taught in Malayali, then definitely uh, their uh, you know, level of understanding will be far better than just explaining the things in English. Though I am delivering this particular uh, keynote in English, uh, as I am not uh, knowing Malayali, uh, but still I know that someone speaks Marathi with me because I am a Marathi background person. My understanding or my grasping or my, uh, you know, uh, uh, memorization of the things, it improves. I should I should not uh, you know miss this chance to refer to uh, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, uh, who who has taken up the primary education uh, in uh, Malayali, and he says that uh, ki, uh, since my primary education was in Malayali, uh, naturally my understanding, my cognitive skills uh, has improved. And that is how he has reached to the highest, you know, position uh, wherein he, he, he became the president of uh, Bharat. So, and he is also called as a missile man. So his overall achievements, if you look into, he has given uh, the importance to uh, the education in vernacular languages. So the quality aspect is that it enhances the creativity uh, in the human being. So teacher should become a facilitator of innovativeness. That is what is uh, uh, his quotation. So how we can integrate the languages with, uh, you know, the uh, delivery of the content that is also a great uh, opportunity to all our teachers. So to make an e-content in the local languages and, you know, searching for the words English substitute uh, in the regional language which also help the student to understand the total concept. Moving towards faculty and institutional autonomy, because national education uh, policy talks of autonomy to the institution. So uh, definitely the 12th plan, it has uh, given the autonomy, it talks of the UGC autonomous colleges. The only safe and the better way to improve the quality of the undergraduate uh, education is to delink most of the colleges from the affiliating structure. The colleges with academic and operative freedom are doing better and have more credibility. The financial support to such colleges boosts the concept of autonomy. So this is truth. 
uh, even if we give the autonomy or a freedom to our student uh, in a class ki okay you learn the subject you wanted if you have some queries i am there to understand that class becomes really a joyful and learning level of the student if you try to uh, look into it is improved so the national education uh, policy talks of the autonomy so revamping the curriculum pedagogy assessment and the student support uh, mm -hmm. it is very very important so uh, let us look into all these aspects at our institutional uh, level what is it mr jos yes mr jos do you want to say something in this <clears throat> No, no, ma'am, you can continue, you can continue. Yeah, I, I heard something from your side. Okay, thank you, sir. Then reaffirming the integrity of faculty and institutional leadership position, the quality aspect here is fair chance to grow to the capacity. See, uh, whenever the uh, faculties who are outstanding, uh, if they are being appreciated by the institution and if they are positioned to the level they deserve, then definitely the growth of institution uh, is assured. Uh, I remember of one Sanskrit shlok, ki amantram aksharam nasti, nasti mulam anaushadam, ayogyo purusho nasti, yojakas tatra durlabha. Matlab, it is stated that no word has uh, uh, less impact like a mantra. No uh, root in this world, Matlab, you, we are aware of there are many plants and the roots are there. So there is none of the plant or none of the root which has which doesn't has a medicinal um, value. Uh, and none of the person is ayogya. Is, we cannot say that this person is of no use. It is not like that. But rather we wanted a person who can assign a proper work to the persons of the scale. So on the governance side or the leadership position uh, in the institution has to take care that what and all are the capabilities of their faculty and accordingly they should assign the responsibility to the faculties. It talks of National Research Foundation, wherein the seed, cultivate and grow research culture right from the schools is been uh, stated over here. Then there will be monitoring, mentoring of the HEIs by the eminent research scholars across the country will happen. So this particular National Research Foundation, uh, it talks of outstanding research as a core requisite for outstanding education and development. So let us increase the inquisitiveness among the students so that they are, uh, you know, uh, prone to the research and they will try to understand an in-depth knowledge about the subject. It talks of light but uh, tight regulatory framework to ensure integrity, transparency and resource efficiency of educational system through various audits. Friends, if you remember that, NAC also ask you for the audits the academic audit, the financial audit, then it talks of a green audit, uh, then the energy audit. So what audit means actually? And audit is nothing but the performance, you know, judging or evaluating our own performance uh, through a reviewed process. There will be some questionnaire and uh, the <clears throat> depending upon the responses from the various departments, we will try to know ourselves so that we understand whether whatever is our vision mission for coming five years, are we directing in the on the correct path or not? So the quality aspect over here is a self-introspection self-appraisal and self-development. So this is very, very important. Though NAC uh, says that it is assessment and accreditation council, right? But still, if you remember that we re request you to prepare your self-study report. Self-study report means you need to introspect yourself. You have to appraise yourself and you need to, pro you know, make your own development plan. Uh, with the help of the documentary evidence, you try to provide all the information, isn't it? So self-introspection, self-judgment, self-evaluation, it is very, very important. And I think it is also advocated and mentioned in the national education policy. National education policy also talks of increased access, equity and inclusion through the various reservation policies, various, you know, uh, scholarship schemes. Government is doing at their own level. 
but still we as a educational institution because nothing like a profession of education you know it is a noblest profession so since we are associated with it how we can give the opportunity and support to all we need to look into iqac cell has to work on it and they have to provide a toast policy wherein we can in uh, which will be uh, you know motivating for inclusiveness and the ready uh, you know uh, opportunities to all students around the optimal learning environments and support for the students i need not talk of but we need to give an ambiance in the institution where the learning will enhance and also the inquisitive inquisitiveness among the student it will be uh, you know uh, ignited because uh, apj kalam talks of the ignited minds because unless and until there is the ignition that spark what i wanted to know this uh, is been fueled Uh, the rocket cannot uh, move ahead so the educational institutions should provide all these it talks of academic bank of credit uh, wherein the students uh, achievements in the terms of credit will be stored at a national level and it will be accessible as and when required by the student it is a beautiful concept academic bank of credits just like we have the uh, banks wherein we save the money and it is accessible through various Yeah, uh, you know, uh, either a Paytm or a Phone Pay or a Bhim app or the net banking or the credit cards. Anywhere, any time, this is accessible. Similar concept is being uh, taken up, wherein the credits given by the student uh, of are uh, taken up by the students uh, will be stored in the bank and it will be accessible all time. Then it talks of a national mission of mentoring, internationalization, financial supports to the student, and promotion of Indian languages, arts, and culture. So we need to grow to the institution as the international knowledge hub or centers. So it is very very important that uh, we should have that standards of education. so there will be a flexibility talks of learners have an ability to choose the learning trajectories and programs and thereby choose their own paths in life according to their talents and interest i talked of learner centric education wherein the guru as well as the students both are learning there will be no hard separation friends i am of science background i am a physicist but i i i always loved singing i always allowed some of the subjects of art but there was no possibility when i was in a uh, student there was no possibility that i can take arts with the science but now uh, this particular policy national education policy is eliminating the harmful hierarchies among and silos between different areas of learning and now the learning will be what you can say a more joyful the creativity and critical thinking will be given a platform to encourage logical decision making and innovation there will be an emphasis on conceptual understanding rather than rote learning and learning for exams uh, i remember when i was a student of graduation you know a few days uh, uh, back we maximum student uh, we teachers we have done same way i think so i don't know Uh, but uh, uh, you know a weeks uh, back we used to mug up the things and write in the exams and after that if somebody used to ask many things we were not even remembering the spirit of india is ethics humans and constitutional values like empathy respect for others cleanliness courtesy democratic spirit spirit of service respect to the public properties scientific temperament liberty responsibility pluralism equality and justice so through various activities various uh, professions uh, various courses uh, add on our value added courses we will try to instill all these things in our student life skill should be given to the student so making an individual to face the life yeah, challenges bring point to na inform pandra name uh, is the quality aspects then it also talks of it's not near that we should go aged back and uh, just uh, the things we we had happened which, which are been done in the uh, history or the itihas should be just felt proud of but we need to have in pace with the race 
to reach the masses, the educational planning and management is very, very important. And for that, the extensive use of technology will play an important role and increasing access for the Vangian student who are not able to have the, you know, the things very uh, common to what we are, we have has to be met. Then recruitment, continuous professional development, positive working at atmospheres and service conditions so that our teachers and faculties as the heart of the learning process should be in inspired and they should feel that, yes, they are into the noble pro pro uh, profession. The rootedness and pride in India and its rich, diverse, ancient and modern culture and knowledge system and tradition, it is very, very important because unless and until we are connected to the roots, we cannot reap arrive. It talks of curbing of commercialization of the education, which is happening now. And here it talks of uh, the, you know, uh, the facilitation of a true philanthropic private and community participation in the education. So this is the background of national education policy. And now let me take you to the journey, how all these aspects of national education policies are being covered through various metrics and documentation in our revised assessment and accreditation process. Friends, we are aware that there are the five basic elements for the growth of the life, isn't it? And they are nothing but the sunlight, wind, soil, water, and space. If they are not there, then it is very difficult for us uh, to survive. Even if one element is not there, uh, we will feel that the life has gone. Similarly, if you look into all seven criteria of NAC, that is a curricular aspect wherein uh, the revision in the curriculum and making it most, more con contextual, more relevant, the reforms in some of the subjects, add on to the subject knowledge, experiential learning, all these points are covered in curricular aspect of uh, the NAC. And as you are now aware of, if you wanted to have an updated information, the curriculum has to be revised after a regular interval of time to the, what you can say, a proper process. So how the teachers in the institution are participat participating uh, either in the BOS or in the academic council and other to uh, make the things more relevant uh, in the present context. Then comes the second criteria, which talks of exclusively teaching, learning, and evaluation. Since we are the academic institution, uh, our mandate is to uh, provide a good teaching to the student. Uh, let us uh, not just teach the student, rather uh, let us learn together to grow. Uh, give me some sunshines, give me some rains. Uh, so that together we grow once again. So that is a beautiful song. So it is a journey where we are talking of learner centered. That means both are learning and the pedagogy will play an important role. How effectively through various life examples, uh, we are able to convey the student the concept that will be very, very important. And I have already talked to you about the evaluation system, wherein we are trying to really judge the student through one type of examination. So are there any evaluation mechanisms or the process involved by the institution uh, to reach to the intellect or to you know evaluate the intellect of the student? So that is in the second criteria, research and innovation. If you look into the profile of our nation in the uh, you know area of research, then research is happening, friends. It's not that our you know people are not doing research. There are many ground root innovations being done, but they are not being documented and published in various journals where we are really lagging. Innovations are happening, but we are not recognizing our innovations and documenting in it to uh, you know present it in front of the researchers or the academicians or the scientists. So research and innovation talks of how many publications are being done, 
how many faculties are there as a guide and how many grants institution has received and how, how many departments are there which are active in the research. So without research, the education cannot happen because that is how the national education policy talks of teaching intensive universities, research intensive universities and the universities of general type. So research plays an important role. I should say that uh, that, you know, management even should support the research activities in the, uh, you know, institution. We are around the students. Students are nothing but the uh, 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 living query box, I should say. So let us open that box. Let us try to understand what and all are queries through a peer-reviewed research. Then student support and progression. Without student, there is no uh, meaning to the educational institution. So how this, uh, you know, academic environment as well as support system uh, in the institution is uh, um, made uh, student-friendly so that you have all records how your students are. Either they are placed or they are pursuing the higher education. What and all are the scholarship schemes, how the institution is taking all efforts to improve and support the student uh, for their academic environment. Then we talk of infrastructure and learning resources. Unless and until system are there, uh, we cannot connect to, isn't it? If I would have said agree to a, a professor of the uh, St. Louis College, Alois College, and that you oh, I will be attending your webinar, the seminar, or the national conference in online mode. But if I would not have this support system, it was it would have not possible, isn't it? So how the overall infrastructure in the institution is in supporting to the good academic culture? Uh, there are the questions: How many computers you have? How are the ICT enabled classrooms are there? Then how how is your library? How many subscriptions are there? And how the students are visiting uh, to the libraries. All these aspects are important, no doubt. But the governance, leadership, its vision, and taking all the institution in a board to reach the vision of the institution uh, should be uh, the very important role of the you know uh, un uh, our institutional leader. So the governance, leadership and management, how it is, whether it is transparent, whether it is interactive, it is decentralized, the participation of all stakeholders, representation are there in the various bodies uh, of the management or not. All these plays an important role and that is how there will be a transformation from mere teaching to learner-centered education. So I think our uh, management people might be uh, knowing their own roles and they will be they might be taking up all efforts to make the uh, education enjoyable provide all support to the staff to the taking help of the alumni as they are the brand ambassadors of the institution and they will make our institution uh, to to be visible on uh, in all walks of life then next we talk of the institutional values and best practices here, the liberty to the institution is given uh, because you know that ki, uh, unless and until the institution have a choice to choose what is how they can perform in this particular area far better than making it compulsory. Oh, you provide this or oh, oh, you give that. We are asking basic things are asked as a, you know, uh, uh, compulsory uh, things, but there has to be some liberty to the institution, wherein institution can have the choice that what and all their best practices, how, uh, you know, taking up this particular practice, there was a transformation to address that particular problem, either it may be social, it may be institutional, or it may be something related to any one of the criterias. So this particular is been, uh, you know, uh, this is possible in our seventh criteria, uh, best practices and what you can say institutional distinctiveness. So institutional preparedness for A and A process in the light of NEP is very, very important because you desire something doesn't mean you are ready for it. So our readiness, your readiness depends on the amount of time you have invested in what you desire. So the time, the effort, as well as the attitude, it is very, very important. If you look into 2A 
in the manual wherein we have asked for institutional preparedness for NEP, how the multidisciplinary education is imparted in the institution. If you look into these questions, whether the institution is enrolled with the uh, academic rank of credit as per in the line with the NEP, some of the questions are there related to national skill development corporation, whether the institution has uh, those programs wherein the skills of the uh, you know students are being enhanced. So slowly next assessment accreditation framework, we are trying to map up with many metrics which will address to what exact how exactly uh, the national education policy is being implemented in the institution then appropriate integration of indian knowledge system is there or not uh, somewhere somehow the institution has taken care of that during the lectures of the faculties some of the examples some of the stories are uh, wherein the contribution of the legends uh, of the past is being showcased and students are being made aware of we talk of the outcome based education so that is also important. So uh, let us talk of all these aspects and the how, uh, you know, uh, the uh, uh, scores outcomes, the uh, curriculum outcomes, the program outcomes. So what, what we are trying to achieve out of this particular uh, then distance education, online education, it talks of uh, ODL also. So all these things we are, we have tried to, uh, you know, integrate in our manual in uh, Question number two A, uh, it is, uh, uh, you know, uh, what you can say. Uh, uh, we are, we are, we are also uh, trying to develop the things as per the NEP. So the personal accomplishments are important. Enlightenment to uh, work for, to know self and work for the society, uh, it is important. Enhancing constructive public edge engagement, it is also important. Productive contribution to the society will help the society to get transformed. Success is when your signature changes to autobiography, isn't it? Bharat ke swatantrata ki amrut mahatsav ki bahut bahut mein aapko shubhkamnaay deti hu vande Bharat Mataram. I am thankful to the institution that they have given me a chance to you know throw some light as well as share my ideas about how the revised accreditation, assessment accreditation framework of NAC, uh, the national education policy, so, so, some of the key aspects, all these things could be integrated so as to make uh, the education more joyful. Thank you very much. Uh, namaste. If there are some queries, we can take for another 10 minutes, if time permits. Uh, yes, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, we have do definitely a few questions. Uh, shall I read it to you, ma'am? Uh, ma'am, the first question is from Minu Divagaran. Uh, Madam, is it possible for an affiliated college, not autonomous, to register for NAD? We are dependent on the affiliating university to register first. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, Minuji, thank you for your question. Uh, yes, if it is an affiliated college, the university has to get registered with ABC first. Then only the institution will have a, uh, or they will be facilitated to enroll uh, the students in ABC. So this particular institution has to uh, to be with the university first. So I should, I, I would like to request you that all the affiliated college should approach the university to get enrolled first. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. I think I am clear now. I am clear now. As of now, you know, there are various phases of implementation. To begin with, first of all, I think they will go with the affiliated college and that slowly uh, down the line, they will make the, uh, you know, uh, things uh, applicable to uh, or through the university, they will give an affiliation to the colleges. Yes. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Uh, yet we do have one more question. Yes. Of, from Dr. Shahina Moore. Uh, ma'am, I'm afraid with the criterion, student support is missed. Would you please add to it in the light, light of NEP, please? Yeah, I have extensively talked on student support. In fact, I should say, uh, in the light of NEP, we are talking.
create religion desirable students so that they are being uh, given an opportunity to have the best uh, you know education so we as an affiliated institution or as an higher education institution how we will work on it first of all i think so that there has to be the policy document see government is supporting and inspiring the student but still there are certain student uh, who even doesn't score much but they are still desirable to have that good education so can we have that particular class of the students uh, who who we can call as a socially or you know uh, or economically disadvantaged class a stock of sdg uh, so those students through the policy document of the institution can be encouraged and we can bring to the uh, platform wherein they will also uh, acquire the education of what so uh, what is a policy can it be your best practice that we have made a policy we tried we have surveyed the student how how much students what what and all are their class economic class and uh, uh, through government what and all are the schemes they are getting the advantage is there some class which is disadvantaged then we will ask we will you know integrate the philanthropists who will fund for the student and we as an institutional uh, educational institution will give the platform to them to uh, uh, study to study yes i think i am uh, i have cleared your doubt madam Yes, uh, thank you so much, ma'am. It was really a virtual feast for all of us. And it is on occasions like this, we get the opportunity to test our knowledge and understanding. Now, nothing goes without a gratitude. So to propose a vote of thanks, I would like to... Okay, so uh, do we have yet any other queries? Uh -huh. You can post it on the chat and we will try to answer it if I am capable of yeah there is a question that's a mandatory question in iq that's why this inquiry which one uh, that's the earlier one i'm afraid uh, achha, achha, okay, okay 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 ma'am um, can i just uh, yes sir okay. please 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 yeah. joseph uh, yeah uh, we, we one of the one of the aims of uh, nep 2020 is internationalization of uh, indian higher education so uh, recently, uh, we have put forward a vision that India is going to be a Vishu Guru uh, uh, as far as uh, higher education is concerned. All right, so, so um, uh, but the problem is um, we have a very diverse education system where different states follow different, diff even different universities follow different patterns. So uh, how do you think uh, we can coordinate all this together so that India can uh, present as a uh, destination of higher education uh, appropriate question really a challenging question to answer but still sir we live in a family our family is not mere a family to whom the mother and father has given a birth our society is our family and it is very diverse we try to have an engagement uh, to the society even isn't it this diversity is our strength and we should celebrate it that is why the basic thing national education policy has talked of multidisciplinary approach, multiple entry, multiple exit approach, wherein all sort of queries, all sort of uh, you know problems to the society will be addressed. First thing, you talked of that due to diversity, the patterns are different. This is a beautiful thing because the patterns are different. It talks of autonomy to the higher education institution. As of now, we were bounded to a typical system wherein there was no autonomy to the institution so the clustering of the educational institution will you know uh, provide the multidisciplinary education the multiple exit multiple uh, entry will motivate the student uh, to acquire a education as per their choice uh, if they have some issues with the family, they can uh, take uh, leave the education, work for some time for the family, make the financial you know stability to the family, and come back to the education. During that, whatever they have achieved in one year, it will be stored in the academic bank of credit. So I think uh, making a Vishwa Guru is uh, we were Vishwa Guru, we are Vishwa Guru, but our uh, we, a single institution not running in the race, will not make us a Vishwaguru. 
it talks of the pattern to be generated by the institution to welfare the you know a community and student around that autonomy will definitely boost and it will act as a power source uh, so that uh, each individual will become uh, you know such a dynamic person either as a, a job seeker or a job giver whatever it may be so that the transformation will happen so it not talks of all the you know 10 points if you are there then then only you are eligible it doesn't talk of it let us see how how it unfolds it talks it started unfolding from the pre primary education in coming 15 years i think the full fledged the policy document it will get implemented and then only after some time we will find the results yes this is a challenging situation because as of now we are bounded by a box of regulations of you know uh, affiliations uh, of uh, you know many things you have to do this you have to do that we are talking of also one, one nation one data one data one nation so the things will come out as uh, it unfolds i don't know uh, how to respond to yes it is a challenge but we will do it sir we will do it thank you thank you ma'am yeah thank you ma'am yeah uh, so by that uh, we come to the conclusion and we look forward to get an exposure about what the best of brains think about this very dynamic issues so now may i request uh, miss vidya c nair assistant professor department of physics to propose the vote of thanks oh so you have a person from my own faculty background thank you very much <laughs> Am I audible? Yes. yes. Okay. Respected Chief Guest of Session, Professor Dr. Lina Govindani, Manager, Principal of our College, IQAC Coordinator, and other members, teachers, and participants from various institutions. A warm good afternoon to one and all. It's my privilege to propose the vote of thanks on behalf of IQAC of St. Eloshius College, Eldarith. I take this golden opportunity to thank our chief speaker of the session, Professor Lina Govindhani, Deputy Advisor, National Assessment and Accreditation Council, Bangalore, who rendered the wholehearted support and willingness to handle the session. Also, your valuable knowledge and advices on the National Educational Policy 2020, as well as on the pedagogy of teaching to build up our students' character formation definitely made our participants a potential reservoir. We have been witnessed how do such a uh, powerful theme can be depicted to story set facts. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for your talk. I thank each and everyone gathered here for being a good listener of the session. Thanks for your good responses also. Thank you once again. Please listen. The feedback form of this session will be given to the chat box. Do fill the form to get the participation certificate. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much, Vidya. Namaste. May Thank I take you. your leave, please? Uh, so, respected part participants, now we will have the lunch break and we will resume the session by 1.30.
Hello, um, uh, Amit Katu has uh, joined, sir. Welcome, welcome to Saint Aloysius College. Uh, welcome, sir. Welcome, welcome, Professor Amit. Uh, no, I, I, I'm I'm a Dr. Chalko principal. Okay, sir. Well, we'll start at uh, one thirty. Okay. Yeah, I'm waiting for that. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. So good afternoon, everyone. Now let's begin with our uh, afternoon session. So to welcome uh, and for the introduction of the speaker, I would like to invite Dr. Sandhya Jayachandran, Assistant Professor, Department of Chemistry, for the welcome address. Over to you, ma'am. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. OK, thank you. A very warm good afternoon to one and all. Welcome back to the second session of NAC sponsored two day virtual conference on quality enhancement of institutions of higher learning, transformational role of NEP 2020. I deem it a privilege to welcome the speaker for the session, Professor Dr. Amit Kort, Department of Education, Guru Nanak Dev University, Amritsar. I would like to extend a very warm welcome to our beloved principal, Dr. Chako sir, distinguished guests, IQAC team, and the participants for the session. It's my pleasant duty to introduce the speaker for the session, Professor Dr. Amit Kotz, to this August gathering. Professor Kotz is serving as a professor since 2016 and presently is the head department of education Guru Nanak Dev University, Amritsar. He has a postgraduate degree in education as well as geography and has a PhD in education. He has served as a teacher educator and has 28 years experience of teaching in university and college at both undergraduate and postgraduate level. His teaching experience covers area of research methodology, educational evaluation, pedagogy, and educational technology. He has served as professor and principal in postgraduate college of education for more than 11 years. His research focuses on educational development, ICT-based pedagogy, and various dimensions of teacher education. He has mentored one postdoctoral research sponsored by ICSSR, 16 doctoral researchers, and has co-authored and authored over 90 research papers, 14 book chapters, and has authored two books. He has presented paper and participated in more than 90 conferences and workshops at international and national level. He has delivered more than 85 keynote addresses in various seminar and conferences, and is a frequent speaker in various HRDCs of various universities. He has been Dean and Convener of Board of Studies in Education, Convener Research Degree Board for 2008 to 10, and thereafter since 2014. He has coordinated more than six refresher courses and 35 short-term courses. He is expert member, Board of Studies of many universities. He has coordinated three UGC and ICSSR sponsored research projects on creative management of teacher education institutions, life skills among border area students, and employability skills of teachers in India. He is also serving for Ministry of Human Resource Development, Government of India funded project, School of Education at Gurdanak Dev University under Pandit Madan Mohan Malviya National Mission for Teachers, and Teaching as Coordinator, 
which is meant for professional growth of school, college, and university teachers, and has mobilized approximately nine crore funds for, from central government. He is coordinator to MHRD for various schemes implemented at GNDU, like School of Education, Faculty Development Center, and National Resource Center in Material Science. He is visiting member for NCTE, NAC, and UGC assignments in various capacities. Additionally, he is professor in charge of Central Library, GNDU, Amritsar. We are indeed privileged to have such an eminent resource person with us this afternoon. May I request you, sir, to take over the session. Over to you, sir. Sir, please unmute your mic. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, uh, uh, let me first of all say thanks to Dr. Sandhya for a very elaborative uh, introduction. And then equally, I'm grateful to Principal Chaku who has invited me uh, to share my views on quality initiatives by, uh, by National Education Policy 2020. Uh, you know, organizing any seminar uh, is one thing, but organizing seminar in a very structured way and with an intention to gain some insight into the theme is another one. You know, uh, let me congratulate all the organizers uh, here who have very meticulously worked uh, for designing uh, uh, the theme and designing uh, the, the information brochures also. One can always have a fair idea about what you really intend to do. Uh, the broader theme is basically quality enhancement in uh, our education institutions. And uh, uh, my basic uh, area in which I'm to talk about is holistic and multidisciplinary education. Uh, you know, how that is going to uh, help improve teaching, learning, and evaluation systems as advocated by National Education Policy 2020. Like before I get into a uh, very structured talk, rather I'll be, I'll be talking to you in a very informally, not a very formal structured talk. Uh, one thing which I would like to stress upon here is that the basic objective of National Education Policy 2020 has been to address the needs. Like, you know, we had uh, various national policies, like we had National Policy on Education 1968, then we had National Education Policy uh, in uh, 1986, uh, a revised version came in 1992. Uh, and after 1992, this is the first policy which has come up, you know, which is a very comprehensive uh, uh, policy. And, you know, there are certain very peculiar things, like uh, even after um, 50, 60 years of independence, we, we initiated a lot of things. Uh, the structure of education expanded like anything. Like, you know, number of schools expanded, number of colleges and universities expanded. Today we have around uh, more than uh, 1,000 uh, universities in the country, including state and uh, uh, central and, uh, you know, deemed universities. And then we have more than 42,000 colleges in the country. Then we have national institutions also. Uh, similarly, number of schools have uh, increased, like uh, after independence, a lot. So there was a lot of efforts on the part of uh, earlier governments also and, uh, uh, you know, uh, earlier policies also. Uh, which were aiming to ensure that education is accessible to all. A lot of uh, schemes and initiatives were taken up. But this time, you know, uh, when there was a quite big and established structure of uh, uh, education, there were a few things which were troubling uh, the system of education. One of the things was that, you know, in spite of uh, expanded education, and normally you will find that people, they were not attached to the cultural heritage of the country. You know, we always say that it's, it's, it's a natural, it's a secular country. And, uh, uh, you know, the kind of history we had, history of education, history 
of culture, history of languages. We were not proud of that. Uh, you know, if if Taj Mahal is there, we are not proud of it, and we are, uh, you know, appreciating a lot of other uh, things, uh, you know, which are there in different countries, but. when it comes to our own structures of our own planning of our own architecture our own uh, uh, you know dances our own folklores probably we were not that proud as people are about their own cultures in respective countries so this was one thing which troubled and you would find that you know when somebody goes out like there is a lot of tendency to move out of the country and when they move out of the country it's not to explore other things but it's out of the reaction that you know we don't have good facility we don't have good structure in the country that's why we want to go out there was a time when only those people used to move out of the country who were not very happy in the country or who were not able to uh, you know uh, gather a lot of skills so they were very poor they would like to go out but today those people who are highly qualified who are highly skilled they are moving out and uh, uh, it's not that you know after um, graduation or post graduation or doctorate you are moving out you start moving you start thinking of moving out after plus two only this was one reason uh, to really reflect on what kind of system do we have and what kind of society we have is reflected by the quality and you know quality of uh, education we are uh, providing so this was one area which was really troubling me people who were at the helm of the affair on secondly like you know number of institutions improved but if you say see the isa report which is uh, basically evaluating school system uh 168 countries participated into that uh, you know assessment uh, uh, you know framework and india was 167 see the quality of school education we had like you know we had our own internal Uh, evaluation systems. I'm not talking about it. I'm talking about international systems. So, uh, you know, when PISA, uh, you know, evaluated 168 countries, school system of 168 countries, we were at 167. Something uh, really we need to work upon. Thirdly, if you see 1,000 universities and 40,000 colleges approximately, and out of those. uh when there is a qs uh, uh, world ranking framework there is a uh, announcement of those things 1000 institutions across the country across the world they participated into this and uh, uh, we could not have even a single institution of the country uh, in in one uh, in in the top 150 institution it is only um, uh, from 150 to 200 we had two three institutions like iisc we had iit bombay and iit delhi now see you know even these three they uh, are coming in first 200 150 to 200 even they are not universities they are national institutions who are you know fed by central government like anything as well as finances are concerned and the best people they are coming in those universities or in those institutions to study so the best institution best kind of facilities you have and then they are coming like they are coming in Uh, in the world ranking of 150 to 200 these were some of uh, the concerns and uh, another thing you know which was uh, uh, addressed by national education policy was that you know we are not using students who are thinkers who are creative who had the capacity to take decisions and spontaneously take decisions we could we are not able to develop students who are problem solvers who are fluent in languages who are fluent in icts what we are doing is we are producing students who are getting 90% marks 95% marks 98% marks so the focus was more on uh, you know getting good marks uh, so cognition was very important uh, cognitive aspect psychomotor aspect these were two domains which were Uh, ignored like we were lacking in case like there there was one government of india's uh, report which said that you know btech computer science uh, 86% of btech computer science people they were not employable employable meaning thereby they did not have like they had the qualification they had the certificate but they did not 
uh, have the capability to solve problems. Like uh, somebody has got 96% math in B-Tech, but if you ask him or her to design a software for a particular problem, he's not able to develop that. You know, even if he has that capacity to develop the software, uh, but when you appoint that person, like the productivity reduces by adding one more employer, employee in the organization. Maybe, I know, there was no team spirit in the student. There was no leadership in the, uh, uh, you know, candidate. So, a lot of uh, uh, life skills, they were not uh, uh, developed during his training program. This was, uh, these were some of the challenges before, uh, uh, before uh, the country and uh, NEP 2020. Try to address those things. Try to address those things. So, uh, you know, if you just go through uh, the history of education, you'll find, like after independence, you'll find one thing, you know, uh, in traditional in ancient time, you would find our systems of education, they were very comprehensive. They were holistic. They were multidisciplinary. Like in one institution, you will find people learning music also, languages also, culture also, anthropology also, sciences also, maths also. But slowly and slowly, what happened, we start thinking in terms of specialization. And that was one problem which, which somehow uh, came, you know, was, was somehow, somehow reflected uh, in, in the kind of society we were developing. So one person, a specialized person for treating heart. I know he learned everything about heart. But heart is not uh, working in isolation. There's a total physique. There's a total system. And in which heart is one part of it. If you're not looking at the whole perspective on the whole personality in which uh, heart is one part and then you are studying about it. Probably while working only or while studying only on heart, probably you don't have that kind of gestaltic perspective and you won't even understand heart in, 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 a, in a meaningful way. Of course, uh, there would be a certain investigation, there would be researches specific to something, but those researches, they need to be generalized on human beings and human being is a system. Total heart would be one eye. So somebody wants to study uh, science, somebody wants to study medicine, somebody wants to work for engineering, somebody wants to work for a law. But ultimately, all these things, you know, if I'm a teacher, I'm a maker of teachers, teacher educator. So I'm working in a society. And when I'm talking about I'm a teacher, I'm teaching teachers. So I'm teaching teachers of a particular subject. So I'm teaching all the students belong to different disciplines. And then I'm specializing about certain pedagogical techniques for a particular domain. Now, if I see myself as a person of education, I see that I'm interacting with those people also who have the background of science, who have the background of mathematics, who have the background of languages, who have the background of music. Because when I'm talking about, you know, general perspective of a teacher in that class I've got students belonging to different disciplines and I'm reflecting on it that's why we say that education is basically an interdisciplinary subject but if you see uh, a discipline of medicine a medicine college so there we are not exposed to physical education we are not exposed to uh, music we are not exposed to fine arts uh, we are not exposed to mathematics. So what we are doing is we are structured, our thought process is structured in a particular way. And anything beyond that, we think that is not a part of me. Uh, so, uh, you know, in this perspective, uh, uh, there was a rethink, like, you know, we, today we have institutions who are management institutions. They are institutions which are law institutions. They are institutions which are engineering institutions, pharmacy institutions, teacher education institutions. Now, all these are standalone, like they are getting to the needs of one discipline. Idea of, uh, you know, when, when uh, NEP 2020 says that uh, 
you can bring in quality of education only if you are grooming the students in a multi disciplinary environment where they have an exposure of music also they have an exposure of environment also they have uh, exposure of uh, crafting also tailoring also basic sciences also basic mathematics also uh, geography also anthropology also uh, languages also culture also anthropology also so you know uh, he has an environment where he can see all aspects of life because all these subjects they are nothing but aspects of life music is a aspect of life art is a uh, aspect of life physique physical education sport is a aspect of life. uh knowing uh, you know what is where is aspect of life knowing about interior of earth is aspect of life knowing about uh, the sky or environment is aspect of life you communicate through languages Ah, uh, you know how many languages can a learner learn? Which language should be started at which level? Should we focus only on one language, or we can focus on different language? What psychology? What uh, you know, sciences speaks about it. And should you give exposure of how many things, and how that has impacted the growth of a human personality in later years? Ah, hmm? uh, you know, uh, all these were. concerns uh, of of national education for 2020 bringing an environment in it is not a single discipline which is working because every discipline has its own ethos sciences has its own ethos but science person also needs to learn how to live in a democratic setup you know science gives you objectivity it gives you Uh, you know uh, specification it gives you experimentation believe in experimental values all these things are very good i'm not saying that that's bad but on the same side that person who is studying science has to live in this society only that society is basically working on certain principles of the constitution democracy secularism all this equity access all these are part of uh, constitutional values if i am not able to cooperate if i am not able to work in a team spirit if i am not able to take the leadership all these things maybe are coming from social sciences but every person has to and similarly a person who has got deep faith into social sciences is developed in a social science environment should also have an element of objectivity in his thought process as a person i may be a person of science but i also require some moments of relaxation which music can give which in arts can give uh, sculpture can do it you know something which i love one thing is you know a study aspect one is your own likings and dislike but what we what what happens in the prison system that we are dominated like you know i am a human being but i am groomed in a particular disciplinary orientation and rest of the things i just ignore so one aspect of uh, of uh, uh, nep was that you know you need to bring out interdisciplinarity and multidisciplinarity in the institutions functioning so that you are able to develop a candidate or a citizen who can relate things like if i am a person of uh, geography i know about uh, uh, you know uh, physical environment around me uh, i should try to link it with other subjects of other domains of uh, 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 the sphere of uh, the life to be able to link it with the uh, social sciences i should be able to link it with uh, uh, you know physical sciences i should be able to link it with life sciences so uh, you know this was one aspect which uh, uh, which earning money we are trying to develop skills which can help us uh, uh, am i audible am i audible yes sir yes sir 
Okay, you know. Of, uh, of uh, uh, earning more, knowing more, developing more skills, developing a quality culture in institutions, uh, and merely following that, am I losing life? You know, uh, as a human being, I have to think about it. Like if I'm studying, if I'm developing skills, if I'm developing some uh, attitudes, maybe uh, say professional values, and because I'm doing this, why I'm doing it? Because I want a good job. Good job means I'm getting, earning more. And if, if in that, like, you know, in the race of getting more money, you learn more, you acquire more knowledge, you acquire more skills, and then you get a good job, uh, you, you uh, earn more, you get a lot of uh, facilities around you, you take care of your family, uh, in, a, in a better way by purchasing all kind of facilities for them. And you're working all the time. Is this life is meant for? This is a big question which all of us, you know, need to understand. I remember, like you know, um, Kalam Sahib used to say that you know the person who is uh, sitting in the office after five o'clock. Doesn't mean that he is very intelligent or he is very hard working. Means he is lethargic. He doesn't know how to complete his work by stipulated time. Because you know, it's earning. Why you are working so hard and so you know uh, enthusiastically? Because you want to lead a happy life. And life is after that workplace. You come nine o'clock to the institution. You work up to five o'clock. Now this is your time which you are spending to earn money so that you can lead a happy life. But if you are not going out of your organization after five o'clock and you are not enjoying with your children, if you are not enjoying with your parents, if you are not enjoying with your partner, if you are not enjoying with your friends, all the time and grows into one thing or the other, Probably you are losing one insight that all what you are doing is to lead a good life. But in that race, if you are not leading good life, you have. To. Uh, like you know, if you, if if we just uh, look at uh, Indian uh, culture point of view, it just says that earth kam dharm moksh. Like you know, uh, there is a time. Uh, it says that there is a time when you have to uh, be into uh, knowing things and uh, developing capabilities for uh, earning more. So, earth. So, you are developing skills to earn more and you earn more. Why you earn? Because you have to enjoy the pleasures of life. But it says that you uh, you know, attain knowledge, you attain skills, and you enjoy. If these two things are through the dictates of dharma, values, then you attain moksha, self-realization. So they say that, you know, this is, this is, these are the different phases of human life. Similarly, if you just see the brahmacharya, ghrast, vantrast, and sannyas, these are different phases of life according to Indian uh, culture. So, Brahmacharya means there is a stage of life wherein you are, uh, you know, striving to know uh, uh, the things around your world, uh, physical uh, life as well as uh, social life. So, you try to know physical phenomena, you will study physics, chemistry, biology, all these kind of things. You also want to know uh, in a society around you. So you study political science, geography, history, sociology, and all these kind of things. So, you know, in Brahmacharya, you try to know all these things to understand your surrounding, physical or social. And then, uh, Brahmacharya, uh, so what you learn in Brahmacharya, you use that, earn money, and take care of your 
immediate family that is grass so that's very important and then is one plus so when your children are grown up you have taken care of them they have studied and they start earning so don't have a clash that you are head of the family now the other person has developed the capability and he is also he also wants to become head of the family so that is the time you give space to your son to fill that space let him lead the family his his responsibility what you have to do is now one plus you are detaching yourself from the immediate family and start linking with the outer society try to do some good things for the society so you get get fame out of it one plus and if you are able to do that probably uh, you will get into sanyas similarly you know anake also said said प्रथमा अर्जिता विद्या द्वितीय अर्जिता धनम तृतीय अर्जिता यशम चतुर्थी किं क्रियसि द वन हु हैज नॉट अटेंड प्रथमा अर्जिता विद्या द वन हु हैज नॉट अटेंड नॉलेज इन द फर्स्ट फेज द्वितीय अर्जिता धनम द वन हु हैज नॉट अटेंड मनी इन द सेकंड फेज तृतीय अर्जिता यशम इन द थर्ड फेज इफ यू हैव नॉट अर्न फेम by doing you know some social service chaturthi kim kare si how can you attain the fourth objective of life that is self realization sanyas moksha so you know as a system of education we need to think about one thing you know this this like you know our education system it was very holistic in never thought that education is one part he said education is a means to make your learner understand what life is all about it is not all about earning money itself but earning money is very important it always says that you attain more knowledge why you attain knowledge because you have to do some work you have to earn money you have to take care of your immediate responsibilities but the thing doesn't end there it continues that you have to take care of society also you have to detach from your immediate family also and then you are you have to move towards the own journey of knowing yourself uh maybe a little philosophical but yes uh, you know one thing which is very important is that as a teacher we have to understand one thing that we have to teach our learners uh you know something beyond what we define today quality when we say quality in terms of teaching learning probably what we are looking for is that you know something uh, some kind of pedagogy some kind of objectives some kind of learning outcomes and then you know uh, uh, uh employing certain specific uh, pedagogies uh, which can help us attain objectives this is one aspect of uh, quality teacher teaching learning but another aspect of uh, quality teaching learning is how successful and happy our students are get my point uh, one one candidate there was a news in the uh, newspaper i don't remember the exact place from where that boy was but that boy was a chopper of 10th class who was a chopper at plus 2 then got admission in one of the best uh, uh, you know management institution in uh, uh, us uh, mit got uh, his bachelor's degree from there got his master's degree from there got one of the best package in one of the best companies got a beautiful girl for marrying and had two uh, boys one day news came that he committed suicide in new york in us uh you know he committed suicide that, that that's one thing like you know uh, he was uh, taken care of but they they uh, referred this case to a psychological division said why this such and such person you know he was so well off uh, he was uh, um, having a very good family he was uh, like you know there was no problem why suicide committed suicide so they studied this and they studied that you know uh from the day one he was topper he got the best job he got the best institution to study uh he had best kind of uh, uh, family life 
and one day what happened that you know there was uh, uh, there was uh, some kind of uh, slow down in the economy and uh, you know his package was little reduced because there was a general uh, slow down now sitting at home he was just discussing and you know he was depressed and was discussing that you know i am i worked so hard this and that and my salary is and you, know, you know my salary has reduced so he was worried about and it day came when both of them decided that you know uh, getting a lower package than this i was aspiring for higher one and i got uh, the reduced package you no know, life is no worth living and he committed suicide why why he committed suicide like he killed his own sons he killed his wife and then killed himself is a real story and they concluded that this problem came because he did not know how to face failure he never failed in his life he was top or all the time from teachers feel that day. teachers feel that day because they didn't tell him the total perspective so this was one of the reason why uh, probably uh, i don't know how nep uh, architect uh, they they designed these two words in uh, nep uh, 2020 policy but i think from my perspective i think giving a perspective of holistic life to the learner is very important as far as teaching learning uh, is concerned telling him that you know it is not only geography in which you are masters or doctorate in geography is important equally important is uh, you know music also equally important is uh, painting also uh, equally important is uh, you know drama also equally important is physics also we many times give a lot of emphasis to sciences now somebody says that i am professor of uh, uh, physics would say it very proudly somebody is saying that i am professor of uh, uh, hindi uh, would be little demoralized i like you know he'll have no self esteem because you know we have structured that we have given more importance to sciences less important to social sciences and further less importance to sanskrit or hindi or for that matter languages everything in life is very important. so this was one perspective uh, in which uh, holistic education was conceptualized and similarly it was conceptualized that you know there has to be a multidisciplinary environment in the institution so that we give exposure to the learners in a different way uh for that there were certain guidelines staff guidelines with government of india or ugc released very recently and now we are saying that you know up to 2035 every institution should be should be somehow uh, you know multidisciplinary and you know when it comes to multidisciplinary or holistic uh, kind of higher uh, education institutions uh, they said okay uh, like in western world you will find certain universities which are research universities like their citation is very high their index is very high their publications uh, are in the best uh, kind of uh, uh, journals which are you know indexed with the scopus which are indexed with bio science all these kind of things. because uh, the total focus is on research they are not do uh, teaching similarly they are teaching universities so they don't work on uh, research at all uh, so they are basically uh, teaching universities and trying to uh, emphasize on 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 uh, uh, learning outcomes you know with respect to the kind of subjects they are teach uh, in india i uh, you know in uh, in, in uh, national education policy 2020 we thought that you know let's not have uh, because uh, we were thinking about multidisciplinarity so we said let's not have a single focus in setting up institution let's not be uh, a teaching university or a research university let it be teaching intense university let it be research intense university so every university is to conduct research every university has to conduct teaching because these two things are dependent like the quality of teaching depends on the kind of research you are doing if you are doing research simultaneously like the new things are added into your teaching perspective when you teaching exploring 
uh, analyzing ideas, problem solving problems in the classroom through discussion, through blended mode, through flipped learning uh, pedagogy. So when you're creating that kind of environment where students are thinking rationally, they are uh, objectively indulging into uh, interaction in groups, small groups, in uh, you know through some uh, you know cooperative learning strategies and objectives are not basically dissemination of knowledge. Objective is dissemination of knowledge added with understanding of that knowledge, added with analyzing those things, synthesizing those things, and creating new things. Now, the most difficult thing in a classroom is that, you know, saying something which is uh, there in the book is pretty easy. You can prepare a PPT and you can, you know, just uh, explain that. The most important thing is are you able to apply that knowledge for understanding the reality? Further difficult is that you know there are certain real problems. Through what you have studied in the classroom, are you able to solve those problems? If yes, probably you are teaching at a very higher level. Hmm? So one thing which is very important for a teacher is, which, which this, uh, this uh, NEP is laying a lot of emphasis, that in classroom, when you are in the classroom, you should go with learning outcomes. That's why, you know, in any, any like I have gone through all the policies of Government of India, as far as education policies are concerned, and, uh, you know, every policy has been talking about quality of education, but for the first time, this word, learning outcome-based curriculum, is being written in the policy. Now we are moving towards ensuring learning outcomes. Ensuring learning outcomes for what? Ensuring learning outcomes for attaining certain skills, certain level of knowledge, certain level of skills, and certain level of attitude. There are three aspects of your personality which should go equally, parallel. If you are just going there to disseminate knowledge, it means you are only focusing on cognition, mind, development of mind. It means you are not focusing on development of skills. You are not focusing on development of attitude. It means you are not doing a holistic teaching in the classroom. You are partially working only on knowledge aspect, development of knowledge, which is uh, a narrower aspect of teaching. Narrower aspect. A complete aspect of our teaching is that you are trying to develop the personality of the learner, and personality includes your mind, your heart, and your hand. So, if in a teaching environment you are able to take a balance of development of heart, development of hand, and development of mind. Probably then only you are effective. This is what NAP says. And if you do that, if you do that, probably you have to think ways and means how to create that environment in the classroom wherein it is not only giving knowledge but applying knowledge and through that knowledge you are able to create. That means you have an implication that you have to change your way of teaching. Now, one problem which is uh, which is there, you know, in this aspect, somebody who has done MSc Physics and has qualified, uh, you know, eligibility test also, got the job in college or a university. If somebody has done doctorate in physics and is employed in a university, now in the whole process of studying physics, he doesn't know how to deal with learners. He doesn't know what are the various mechanisms through which he can deliver and he can make the learner understand physics in a better way. He has not studied how to develop creativity among the learner. He did not study how to develop scientific temper in the learner. He has not developed you know, through his education any insight how to develop life skills in the learner. Now, I'm not talking about physics only. It, it, it is equally happening in 
you know, sociology also equally happening in history also. So they're all people who are appointed there. They are basically experts on disciplinary knowledge. And that is why, you know, in these drafts, like NEP, uh, after NEP 2020, there are two, three things which have happened very prominent for developing a multidisciplinary environment in colleges and universities, which are already multidisciplinary. Like, for example, any college who have got, uh, you know, uh, science faculty also, social science faculty also, language faculty also, um, you know, uh, performing arts faculty also. If they do not have faculty of education, you know, uh, in, in the whole draft, you will find uh, when, when, when they are talking about multidisciplinarity, they are saying that, you know, in every university and in every college, multidisciplinary college, where all faculties are there, there is a recommendation that they must open up a department of education. Why so? One thing is that, you know, there is some content, there is some content of education, like there are certain courses of education, like, you know, uh, you all must be knowing about it, like Government of India has initiated one program known as ITEP, Integrated Teacher Education Program, like, you know, four years BA, BA, four years BSc, BA, four years BCom, BA program. And that is not given to single standalone colleges of education. It is given only to central universities, state universities, and probably government colleges. Initially, like uh, they, they want to open up uh, approximately 50 to 80 institutions from 2023 to 20, uh, 2023 to 28. Yeah. So why they are saying it? Because you know when there is a department of education in a university or department of education in a college. So that would be a center which will have some kind of interdisciplinarity. Uh, why? Because, you know, their uh, teachers are going to teach the pedagogy and the anthropology. So, so we develop teachers, we organize refresher programs for physics also, and a teacher, Department of Education's teacher is going to develop pedagogy skills for teachers. So slowly and slowly, there would be integration, like a professor of education would interact with a professor of physics. He'll talk about the disciplinary knowledge and he will suggest or he will interact how to deliver that knowledge of physics amongst the learner, how to understand and learn, how to understand various evaluation techniques, which have different objectives, how to formulate an effective, uh, effective question, which can arouse Kind of curiosity among the learner. Sometimes we ask questions and children just respond. There is no uh, you know, thinking process which takes place when a teacher asks. The purpose of asking questions is different. So if there is a professor of education along with professor of physics, professor of chemistry, professor of uh, uh, languages, professor of social sciences, so there will be interaction about interaction of uh, content and a way of uh, understanding learner, a way of understanding evaluation schemes, the way of understanding various types of transaction techniques, delivery mechanisms. And what will happen when a teacher of physics is going to teach his class of physics is going to have some impact on him because he has interacted with a professor of pedagogy. So he will learn how to use pedagogy and as a teacher, because I'm also a pedagogy teacher and pedagogy teacher means I have to teach teachers how to teach a subject. Now, if I'm a person of physics education, like I'm MSc physics and I'm MA, and I'm teaching in department of education. So my knowledge of physics is very old one when I did MSc physics. After that, I entered into the domain of education. So I'm more specialized and more focused on pedagogical things. My physics knowledge is at the back. But when I'm interacting with the professor of physics, so what happens? I also get some kind of updation of physics knowledge. So when I have to teach how to teach physics, I need to be updated with the disciplinary knowledge of physics. And then I have to link it with pedagogy. So I'm also benefited. 
and a professor of physics or professor of chemistry or professor of sociology, they're also benefited because of me. I have benefited because of them. So, you know, my department, education department is interacting with all the departments of the university in a multidisciplinary environment becomes a hub. Secondly, what uh, Government of India, NEP uh, 2020 talked about, they said that you know, every university runs doctorate program. And before uh, you know, doing actual research, every student has to undergo a pre-PSD course. A pre-PSD course. Till now, there's one uh, compulsory subject of, pedagogy, of, of, of research, and then there are certain papers of his discipline and academic writing and so on. But now, uh, NEB 2020 says that because 90, 95% of the students who are doing research in different subjects, they are going to become teachers in colleges or universities. So why not have a compulsory paper of education in a pre-PSD course? So that's another initiative with which, which, uh, which I think if implemented by uh, all uh, state and central universities, you'll find slowly and slowly uh, the quality of teaching is going to improve. You know, when as a, uh, as, as a professor of education, I tell that you prepare learning outcomes. So I also tell them that learning outcomes are to be formulated with respect to the mind, with respect to the contents. And then, you know, a particular subject, for example, uh, sciences. So I, I am I'm telling them that you have to develop learning outcomes for science, then I have to tell them that you have to formulate learning outcomes for skills. When you are teaching skills, which skills are very important for a learner to learn if he's a student of sciences? Accuration, measurement, all these kind of things. And I think simultaneously, I have to tell them that you have to formulate learning outcomes for attitudes or for heart also. So it's not that, you know, you've got the syllabus and you start teaching what you studied in your graduation or post-graduation, or you take hold of some basic text and, uh, you know, you start preparing from it and delivering it. So teaching is much more than that, beyond that. So content, mastery of content is the prerequisite for becoming a teacher. That's not the only condition for becoming an effective teacher, for quality initiatives and teaching learning. So when I say that learning outcomes are to be formulated for cognitive, cognitive domain, for cognitive domain and for affective domain, simultaneously, I also tell you in my classes of uh, education that, you know, which domains assessment has to be done by which evaluation mechanism. Somewhere you make use of uh, essay type questions. Sometimes you make use of show type questions. Sometimes you make use of objective type questions, sometimes you make use of matching type questions, sometimes you make use of multiple choice questions, sometimes you make use of uh, biopsy examination, sometimes you make use of assignment, sometimes you make use of rubrics. Hmm? So which mechanism, which evaluation mechanism is to be used for testing of which type of objective? Probably in higher education, disciplinary knowledge, we don't learn that. We simply Consider that the content is the most important thing. So that is another thing which is very important from the point of view of uh, developing a multidisciplinary environment uh, in, in a higher education institute. Uh, for achieving certain other objectives, like, you know, we have uh, uh, standalone institutions. What to do about it? One thing is that, you know, uh, as far as uh, colleges of education are concerned, uh, uh, NEP has already said that every college has to somehow become a multidisciplinary institution by 2030. Now, how to how to do about it? What to do, what to do about it? Like even you have you, yours is a uh, multidisciplinary institution. Probably you may not have certain subjects that are important for developing it a, a multidisciplinary environment. You must have a department of music. You must have a department of language. You must have a department of fine arts, performing arts. Uh, you know, sculptors, tailoring, in addition to very popular courses like, you know, sciences, traditional courses, sciences, 
I know social sciences, commerce, languages. So, so must have uh, uh, like those which are already multidisciplinary environment, they have to add on certain courses which gives it a look of a, and look, not only look, but spirit of a multidisciplinary environment. This is one aspect. But there are certain institutions uh, which are standalone institutions. Like, you know, there's a college of management, there's a college of engineering, there's a college of uh, medicine, there's a college of, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, education, college of law. All these institutions are also to be, to be multidisciplinary in coming days. So what, what, what can be done about those institutions? You know, you, uh, there is a provision of uh, developing a cluster college cluster college, like, you know, we can collaborate uh, with a nearby institution and can have, a, can have a dual degree program. Like there is a parent degree, there is a partner institution. So you can have uh, a MOU with them and see to it how admission has to be taken, how fees has to be divided, all these kind of things. But there would be a partnership of two institutions. Or to like, for example, I just said, government of India says now we will not have single, uh, you know, uh, BA college. So they said we are going to have a multidisciplinary or integrated courses in teacher education. There will be BA, BA program four years. That means now if there is a BA college separate standalone and there is a, uh, uh, you know, uh, there is a there, there is a multidisciplinary environment nearby, they both can collaborate if it. Multidisciplinary environment, multidisciplinary college do not have department of education, and there is a nearby department of college of education. So you can have a MOU and you can merge. Either you can merge uh, uh, the department, or you can have independent identities, and then you can have the MOU and can work as a cluster college. So three years in one college, with some inputs of. Colleges, uh, college teachers of colleges of education, and the fourth year totally in college of education. These kind of mechanisms have been evolved to develop a multidisciplinary environment. Similarly, you know, uh, uh, government has come out. Various state governments have come out with a cluster university system also. Like, you know, there is a university they they they, they, they develop a team university, cluster university, and then certain government institutions are uh, made. Constituent college of that university. There is a small campus of uh, the cluster university administration, all these kind of things, and there are certain constituent colleges attached to it. They are working as a cluster. So sharing resources. Sometimes what happens is like you are applying for NET. You have challenges for admissions. Now you are a small institution, and uh, NAC comes, you don't have that ability because you know, and NAC is assessing. They have the common parameters. And as a standalone institution, sometimes, or as a multidisciplinary environment, also you don't have inputs of certain departments. And as a standalone institution, you don't have, uh, you know, a, a perspective of different other disciplines. So if you both collaborate, what will happen? You will uh, fare well in NAC criteria, uh, like different aspects of NAC. In a better way. And together you can fetch more. More something is, something is addressed to me. Anita makeup. A profile. Anita makeup. Please mute yourself. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, uh, <laughs> so, uh, so you know, uh, this is how uh, uh, government is trying uh, to to develop a multidisciplinary environment. I'll try to sum up my uh, my talk. Uh, you know, there could be there could be many uh, provisions. There could be many challenges. There could be uh, many uh, 
suggestions uh, to to develop multidisciplinarity to develop uh, how education department can take the role of uh, uh, a, ro a role of uh, a leading departments to connect with all the departments so that all the departments they develop or to integrate content with pedagogy all these things uh, can be written in a document but ultimately what was important is you know all these suggestions they are understood in your own context don't don't, don't understand it from the context of uh, policy makers maybe they must be having some kind of uh, uh, some kind of biases also uh, but there are some good ideas in the uh, try to understand them try to understand the strengths of those things try to understand what could be the challenges uh, in effective implementation keeping in view your objectives institutional objectives and try to develop your own pathway try to uh, you know create a environment where all the stakeholders are sitting together and deliberating on these initiatives and on the path ahead to implement these uh, you know initiatives try to make your own road map to which you all are committed uh make a committed effort to implement what you decide because implementation effective implementation cannot be done by policy makers it has to be done by practitioners only so if practitioners they understand the spirit of the ideas which are given in the uh, policy document if uh, uh, those ideas are understood uh, and deliberated for effective implementation in the process if you get if you become committed to those ideas and road map probably then only will be able to get uh insight and will be able to get uh, the benefit out of uh what has been written there for ensuring quality teaching learning and assessment in higher education we have long way to go we have to compete with world institutions and uh, you know the way uh, government of india is going now they are giving uh rise to the best institutions of the world to set up their centers in the country and they are also allowing the best centers of india to set up their centers outside the country now we are going to work in a very competitive environment with a focus on our own culture so this is all from my side thank you so much for giving me this opportunity thank you so much Thank you so much, sir. It was really an enlightening session for all of us. Now I request all the participants to switch on your ca camera for a uh, photo session. Once again, I request all the participants to switch on your camera for a photo session. Thank you, everyone. Now, to propose vote of thanks, I would like to invite Ms. Lakshmi Jayakrishnan, Assistant Professor, Department of Zoology. Zoology. Thank you, Gartika. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm thankful to the honorable speaker, Professor Dr. Amit Khod, HOD, 
of education guru nanak dev university amritsar for his inspirational and valuable speech on the topic holistic and multidisciplinary education in enhancing quality of teaching and learning in higher education institution it has been really beneficial to everyone who participated during this session and it is informative and thought provoking i once again express my sincere gratitude to you sir for your valuable contribution during this session i'm thankful to our principal dr chakko jos as well as the nac team i also thank one and all for your sincere participation and making this time a great thank you all over to you kartika thank you so much ma'am so by that we come to the conclusion of the second session and we begin the uh, paper presentations exactly by 3 o'clock so i request all the participants to resume the session at 3 pm sharply thank you
Bence de. Ha, Türk gerçi ya, bunu da tanıyorum. I A U K ka form chahiye aapko. Ye karna chahta hu na. Ha, ye bolo na I A U K application chahiye aapko. Ye bolo sir. Main to kuch aur samajh raha tha. डॉक्टर मुकेश योर योर कैमरा एंड माइक आर ऑन योर योर कैमरा एंड माइक आर ऑन डॉक्टर मुकेश इफ यू कैन हियर मी योर कैमरा एंड माइक बोथ आर ऑन Sir, I muted. Thank you. Thank I you. muted. Sorry for interruption, sir.
so good afternoon everyone now let's uh, begin with the paper presentations track a so the chair of the session is professor vishwanath mr assistant professor center for management studies presidency college bangalore i invite uh, ms anu joshi Professor Vishwanath, are you here? Uh, yes, sir. Am I audible yeah. to you, sir? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay so I invite Miss Anu Joshi, head of the Department of Psychology, Saint Aloysius College, Trishu, for welcoming the speaker and introduction. Over to you, ma'am. A warm welcome to all the dignitaries and the paper presenters who are virtually present here for the NAC sponsored two day virtual national conference on quality enhancement of institutions of higher learning, the transformational role of MEP 2020, organized by our college. And my duty is to welcome you all to the paper presentation of our conference. And our session is chaired by an eminent person, Professor Vishwanatha MR. A PhD scholar who has submitted his thesis to the University of Mysore and waiting for his viva events in the area impact of e-learning on higher education in India. He also holds an MBA degree from VTU Belgaum. He has a 12-year academic experience with several paper publications in ABDC Index and Scopus List Journals. He is also an and MBA coordinator for the Presidency Business School and the same college. He has organized many national FTPs, MTPs, and workshops for the business school with a research area of interest in higher education and brand management. We are lucky to have him today. I heartily welcome you to this paper presentation session, sir. Thank you. Next, I would like to welcome all the participants who are presenting their papers today. I wish all the best wishes and I thank them once again on my behalf and also to our institution. So let us proceed to the paper presentation sessions and thank you once again. Vishwanatha, please take over. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Musa, are you making any initial remarks? Then we will start. Musa, can you hear me? Yes, sir, you're audible, sir. I yeah. think, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, quite... uh, shall we start? Yes, sir. Please, shall we start? Please, sir. Oh, go ahead. So we will uh, follow the question. So our first paper presenter is Dr. Deviga Sharma, Government Degree College, Jammu Kashmir. Okay. Is Deviga Sharma here? May you know Dr. Deviga Sharma? Is she here? Dr. Deviga Sharma? Are you here?
uh, name is in the list of participants uh, it seems so uh, can we call the next person yes ma'am go ahead with the next person okay sir uh, the next one is pallavi paul from the department of law assam university silchar uh, good afternoon everyone at first i would like to take this opportunity to express my profound gratitude and heartfelt regards for giving me this platform to present my uh, paper on the topic a critical appraisal on uh, national education education policy 2020 with special reference to its impact on the legal education at first i would like to share the screen um, So as we all know in India, uh, under the national education policy, the government has always attempted to enhance the national uh, nation's education educational standard, and its main purpose of the uh, policy was to promote the standard of the education and um, the strategies applicable in both university level as well as in the primary education. So the ed national education policy envisions an India centric Uh, education system that directly contributes to our nation's long-term transformation into an equitable and thriving, knowledgeable society by offering a high-quality education to everyone. It seeks to integrate widely available professional education, which is available uh, in India, that is um, related to law, technology, agriculture, pharmaceuticals, and other fields. Uh, and to and the purpose is to. Um, improve the quality of education uh, and to also add the vocational courses in the university level education so let me talk about the objective of my present study uh, the study is to know the effect of the uh, national education policy 20, 2020 on the legal education and to know the possible outcomes of the policy on the higher education uh, then to know uh, what are the possible drawbacks of the policy on the legal education in india and lastly to provide suggestions now let me talk about the research question of my study the first one is what is the impact of the policy on the higher education in india what are the challenges before the advent of the national education policy and what is the motive behind the formation of the policy uh, with regards to the uh, uh, hypothesis of my study uh, first one is there is no significant effect of national education policy on the Uh, legal education and the next one is there is a significant effect of the national education policy on the uh, legal education so uh, i would like to talk about the salient features of the national education policy 2020 uh, with regard and its impact uh, with the in the legal education in india the first one is uh, globalization and uh, liberalization uh, so with regards to the globalization and uh, liberalization it is one of the key feature of the policy and um, it has invited the best foreign law universities to set up campuses in india the objective uh, of incorporating this particular provision is to provide access to uh, the to standardize the quality of education and to uh, provide exposure to the indian students and and also to attract the best international talent next one is multi multilingual education in the past education uh, english was in the education system english was the primary language of the instruction in india but uh, after uh, we uh, in the in this policy uh, proposals has been given that uh, to add uh, multilingual uh, option in the education further uh, another uh, one of the important selling feature is equitable quality education it this uh, the national education policy it encourages the higher education institutions to foster diversity in their classrooms to enhance the quality of peer learning for the students by offering scholarships uh, to up to 50% of students from 
economically backward uh, sections and the, the national education policy also encourages such institutions to work actively uh, to re raise the funds from corporate as well as uh, the charitable sources so that they can provide the uh, scholarship to up to 50 percent of the students from the socially and economic, economically disadvantaged groups. Now let me talk about uh, vocational education. So the national education policy promotes the universities to teach the, their students analytical reasoning, uh, problem solving skills, uh, then uh, communication, then teamworks and other skills. Further, um, it also encourages the vocational education that, that should be provided uh, in the higher education systems uh, so that uh, much more employment should be uh, provided and uh, it can produce much more jobs and uh, opportunities. Professor Pallavi, uh, sorry to interrupt, can we just uh, go to the methodology or as next uh, aspects of it so that we need yes, to sir. keep track of time also, sorry for that. Sure. Uh, so in the, uh, the, this research is conducted strictly uh, is conducted strictly on the analytic and doctrinal research. So I would like to talk about the what is the impact of the national education policy on the legal education. So with regards to its impact, uh, I would like to say that this this uh, the national education policy proposes the Higher Education uh, Commission of India to be established uh, as a higher education regulatory body, uh, excluding the medical and legal education. So the concern is uh, what concerns to be is uh, what will, will occur to the existing bodies like UGC and other bodies. So uh, this higher education regulatory body uh, will, it will be going to uh, uh, provide uh, a better academic and um, academic uh, situation for the students, and there will it uh, it will no longer have have any economic capabilities, uh, meaning it will uh, it will not be able to regulate the money under the new policy. The Ministry of Education previously recognized as the Ministry uh, Ministry of Human Resource Dev Development will now handle the financial processes that were originated originally settled by the University Grant Commission. So uh, let me talk about the uh, opportunities in the National Education Policy 2020 and what were the challenges before the uh, National Education um, Policy. Uh, one of the challenges is uh, fragmented university ecosystem. Then another one is uh, poor autonomy of facilities and institutions. Then another one is um, inadequate educational outcomes and um, lack of uh, skill development in the in the students then another one is inadequate regulatory system then can uh, that stifle the expansion of the outstanding and innovative institutions then next one is um, inadequate research grants in all fields so uh, that is what that were some of the challenges um, before the arrive uh, before the Mm, arrival of national ed education policy 2020 but let us talk about uh, what were the uh, how this education uh, this how this policy is going to help the people that first one is uh, it may help in the education in the form of establishment of higher education system consisting of a large and multidisciplinary institution then renovating the curriculum teaching methods, evolutions, and uh, scholar system to improve the student experiences. Further, it will improve the management of institutions of higher education by independent and hi uh, highly qualified councils and uh, recognize and reward uh, faculty and- uh, the Madam, are you changing the slide because uh, still I can see NEP's impact on that. Uh, yeah, right now I can, yeah. Yes. Now let me talk about challenges uh, in implementation of national education policy. Uh, as you all know uh, that- Madam, uh, keep it brief, ma'am, so that because a uh, few more uh, people has to yes, present, yes. kindly keep it brief. 
Sure, sure. So some of the challenges is that the private and the self-governed -go institutes are undergoing a significant uh, transformation under the uh, policy, uh, which can be viewed as associated to more autonomous framework. And the administration has already declared that it wants to promote the integrity and autonomy of higher education, but it has it, but it has demolished the university grant commission, which is a key institutional and regulatory agency in the field. And education will become much, much more uh, commoditized and centralized as a result of this. So at last, I would like to conclude by saying that Students can benefit from a multidisciplinary institutes. Uh, what was the uh, main proposal of the national education policy, which is one of the, uh, by networking as well as by learning from the scholars and the students from various fields. However, this recommendation may not be practical due to lack of physical space as well as financial support from for uh, such an institute. Maybe some kind of financial uh, support is uh, is is obviously required from the government, uh, but but on the other hand, well, most of the national law universities are already experiencing the uh, capacity issues and are unable to accommodate the ex existing student body. Um, at last, I would like to say uh, that wind um, up the session. You, Your time is up. Okay, with this, I would like to uh, conclude the presentation here. Thank you. Uh, ma'am, just I had one doubt. Is it a proposed study or has you already performed the study, ma'am? Uh, it's a proposed study. It's a proposed study, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, so any, uh, what kind of a tools you just thought of uh, using it, statistical tools, since you had a kind of hypothesis. So can you just throw some light on that? Yeah. I have uh, actually referred completely secondary source. I have not relied on any primary sources uh, based on what was the uh, doc what was the uh, policy uh, I have studied. And other than that, uh, what was the any other bills which were related to the education policy based on that uh, I have completed the study. Okay, you mean to say this is what the study, this is it. You're not supposed to get into the primary data collection or as any yes, such yes. kind of thing. This is only purely based on secondary research, right? Yes, yes. Because since somewhere you have just mentioned like it's an analytical study and uh, so, and you had hypothesis. Uh, any, uh, how, how you just prove the hypothesis, any proof for that? You have a hypothesis and a research problem that way. There is no significant effect on that. So how do you prove that, ma'am? Uh, yes, I would like to say that um, uh, because in the practical field, uh, the one of the proposal of the um, policy is to integrate the other uh, subjects along with the law subjects, along with the Vedic studies. Because uh, sorry to interrupt, the, madam. I'm just asking, like, is there any statistical way of proving this or is disproving this, accepting or rejecting this? Theoretical wise, yes. it's fine. If you're planning for any future study, it's fine. Since you have conducted secondary research, you are saying, like, okay, it's, this is it. Uh, so, how do you prove these hypotheses? I don't mind. So this is just a kind of a suggestion. So if you are really you know, would like to just perform in a primary study, okay, uh, kindly use any statistical tools so that uh, so it carries some sort of significance. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, so participants kindly note that you have to uh, present your paper within the 10 minutes. Okay, so we have the first presenter here, Dr. Devika Sharma, Government Degree College, Jammu and Kashmir. Ma'am, uh, are yes. you here? Uh, yes, yes, yes. I'm here. Can you hear me, ma'am? Yeah. Yes, we can hear. Yes, go on, ma'am. Okay. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes, ma'am, we can see. Okay, just a second. Okay. Okay. Uh, a very good afternoon, uh, respected chairs uh, and intellectuals gathered from 
uh, India and abroad. It's been an honor being amongst the galaxy of intellectuals. Uh, as you can see, uh, the topic uh, for today's discussion uh, will be uh, materializing NEP 2020 potential, transforming education through technology. Uh, since I will am um, from JNK, I will be uh, sharing a little uh, about uh, NEP's impact on JNK and how, how we are dealing with it. Uh, I will be going with the abstract a little bit since we have a paucity of time and I think there are uh, many more presenters in the line. I will be very short. Uh, the national policy of education has delivered a master stroke um, in policy reform. It can lead Indians into a new reality in which employment uh, opportunities will be a plenty. It aims to deliver an equity and inclusion while emphasizing on conceptual understanding of a road learning and a personalized learning experience in contrast to one fits all approach. It will be now uh, up to the educational ecosystem to support it through actualization. Uh, what my paper deals uh, will be uh, related to uh, the recent trends which uh, NEP has brought in, uh, the benefits and of course, a few demerits which I feel uh, this NEP has uh, led uh, to this, uh, in the state of JNK, which I am uh, actually uh, seeing it uh, with my own naked eyes. Uh, there are certain things which, um, you know, a demerit kind of thing which NEP has bought. So I will be talking about that. I will be going uh, directly uh, to the various uh, uh, emerging trends uh, which NEP has bought. What NEP has bought? NEP has bought uh, a, a new trend that is learning in collaboration. I have seen even in my college that students are learning in collaboration since there are many subjects, there are many skills which are introduced and it is impossible for a child to go it by, by his, his or her alone. So what I have seen that uh, students are learning in collaboration with each other. Besides that, I have seen that uh, a new culture which has developed that uh, students are learning outside the classroom. Earlier, we used to see that students are learning uh, mostly in the classroom. But what NEP has bought, it has bought, uh, you know, learning outside the classroom with their mobile phones, with their, e uh, you know, e-learning materials, uh, with their phones filled with new apps like Swayam and all that, uh, students are learning outside the classroom also. Besides that, so social media has also uh, helped uh, in, uh, uh, you know, helping in learning. The, like um, I have seen a, a face, the role of Facebook, you know, which has, uh, you know, helped Facebook uh, even in studies also. Students do, uh, you know, benefit of Facebook and other social media apps. Besides that, uh, uh, NEP has also improved uh, with the learning of uh, uh, artificial learning, right? Besides that, uh, uh, NEP has also bought uh, a new trend that is uh, gamification. Uh, even in JNK, students are very much willing uh, to learn with games. So besides that, it has also bought that. Uh, besides that, there are few benefits, uh, you know, uh, which NEP has bought into like uh, I, I i will say that uh, the, you know technology has become a necessary evil although it's evil but it is necessary we do need it you know besides that we are there are many coaching institutes in my state also like the famous Ellen and Akash, they are very good in uh, providing medical and engineering uh, coaching to the students. They have also, you are using, you know, uh, technology uh, to improve uh, their, uh, their courses uh, and the students are, uh, do liking it because of their flexibility. They can use these apps at their own pace. Uh, what uh, I feel that uh, uh, technology has done and NEP has done, it has, you know, increased the social isolation and loneliness. I have uh, found in my state also and do have found that the students uh, are generally, uh, you know, are immersed in their Uh, Dr. Devika, you are uh, not audible. Kindly just enable uh, your audio. Yeah, I, I think I am audible now. Yeah, now it's fine. Go ahead. Oh, okay, okay, okay. 
I'm just one request if you can just share your PPT or PDF, whatever you have, so that will be quite convenient for me so that I can. Just yeah, uh, uh, I'm sharing it, sir. Uh, Please. I think you. Yeah, I'm sharing it. I've already shared my screen, sir. Uh, oh, sorry, uh, it's not visible. I'm sharing it, sir. I think. I think there's some technical problems, sir, but I'm sharing it. Um, Ma'am, maybe if you switch off your camera and share your screen, the PPT will be visible. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Just a second. Okay, I will go ahead. I think it's visible now. Uh, sorry, ma'am, I couldn't see it. Okay. But I'm sharing it, sir. Uh, you want me to continue or you want me to share my screen? <laughs> uh, uh, ma'am, uh, or else you just keep it brief. Uh, what were your major objectives of the study? Is there any... Okay, okay. This, this is basically a descriptive type of study, sir. Uh, okay. This is not... Uh, Objectives. It's a secondary uh, kind of a research, right? Yeah, yeah, and basically. Design. Yes, yes. It what is. was your main objective, ma'am, of this paper? Okay, okay. Basically, my main objective of this uh, study was uh, to basically see the impact of NEP 2020 since it is being launched all over India. So I was trying to find out uh, how it is, you know, uh, how it has impacted my state. Basically, uh, it was about, basically about my state. Uh, about it's a small based area. On the state, it's impact on that particular state. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not whole state, uh, the area in, in which that's I am fine, working. That's fine. Any literatures have you gone through it, ma'am, uh, based on this at least particular? Uh, so, um, yeah, I have gone through uh, the last NEPs, uh, that is 1968 and 86. And how, you know, since uh, it's been a long time between the both NEPs, uh, 86 and, you know, 20, these 2020. It's been. Uh, I mean to say, any research papers based on this area of existing that NEP twenty twenty any research since it's a secondary research, uh, probably yeah. uh, in order to get the information, any uh, research papers yeah, yeah. Have gone through it. The existing. Yeah, there are very few research papers, so uh, that's what I am saying. That is very new. It's very new, and we are all are working all over India. Yes, so. yes, of course. So it's very new, but research is very less, so as you might be knowing it. So, and especially uh, if we talk about JNK, there is, I, I didn't, I'm sorry, I didn't find any paper. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sorry, maybe I'm, I'm uh, uh, but I am trying okay. to find out. Probably your study, it, it can be a first of its kind, you know, to just worry. I, I, I'm not sure, but that's what I am thinking that it is first. Yeah, yeah. Okay, what are the major outcomes, ma'am? If you just uh, briefly explain it, that will be. Uh, basically, sir, um, uh, NEP is very, uh, you know, it's a kind of holistic policy. It's very broad. You know, I'm not, uh, I'm not claiming it that we have achieved all its goal. What, what they are, you know, but we are working on it. Uh, so, I will say the outcome is uh, um, a mixture. Uh, some objectives are fulfilled, uh, like we are working on a digital university with, uh, you know, like we have, uh, you know, in, in uh, JNK, we have, uh, you know, that, uh, uh, you know, we have mostly uh, fulfilled our objectives of CBCS and all that. But uh, since many things have been left, so I'm not sure it's all, but we are working on it. Surely in next, uh, you know, six months or one, one year, uh, we will be in, up to the mark. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you. thank you so much. So. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Now the next presenter will be Pradeep Praveen Kumar Kuvarasan Dhyanesh from Bannariyamman Institute of Technology, Erode, Tamil Nadu. Sir, are you here? Praveen, sir? Praveen Kumar, sir, are you here? Sir, can we call? Yeah, please go yes, ahead sir. with the next participant, ma'am. Oh, okay, sir. So the fourth paper presenter is Navina M. Kirti Vasan, Bannariyam and Institute of Technology, Erode, Tamil Nadu. Can we have Navina, ma'am, here? Yes, ma'am, I'm here. 
yes go on ma'am okay is my screen is visible ma'am yes ma'am please go ahead yes ma'am yes ma'am good evening everyone present here and navina from the department of textile technology at banarium institute of technology here i'm going to explain the outcome based learning system and my teammate is kirti wasan uh, sorry uh, are you a student is yes, sir i am okay. student go ahead go ahead okay sir. outcome uh, there are different definition for outcome based education um outcome based education curriculum means starting with a clear picture what is important for students to be to understand them clearly and what they what they are able to do then organizing a curriculum and instructions and assess, assessment based on their interest is known as outcome based uh, learning system uh, it's a good learning system where we can uh, implement our ideas practically uh, with the help of our teachers uh, both ritually and uh, physically uh we must have four important points in this uh first clarity of focus designing and high expectations and um, expanded opportunities clarity of focus uh, means everything teachers do must be clearly focused on what they want uh, students to know understand and able to do it in other words if a teacher sh a teacher should focus on helping students to develop the knowledge skills and personalities uh, that will enable them to achieve uh, intended outcomes this is the uh, outcome savina uh, just to kindly keep it brief uh, i just need a uh, objectives uh, methodologies that you just follow uh, and uh, the final outcome so kindly keep it to these points okay sir okay sir mm. sir this is the uh, main outcome of our uh, paper course outcome one course outcome two course outcome three this is the system we are following in our college no that's so, that's of, of course uh, so it's it's more of a system kind of thing uh, so is it any objectives for your paper otherwise it will become more of a essay explanation of a essay all these po cos okay we are just following across uh, the country so this is it's there already there it may not be a kind of outcome what was your objective of this paper ma so the object of this paper uh, is to is to make interest on what we are doing clearly students what actually what actually students want to do with the help of teachers not insisting teachers uh, or um, faculties teachers or faculties uh, things and uh, what students want to tell or uh, do with implementing that is uh, the main object sir okay uh, so any methodologies any uh, secondary research what kind of research uh, it is sir it is the research about students and the and the interactive uh, fine fine, fine. Uh, so uh, the thing is next time whenever you just present a paper so kindly just go ahead with the, some framework for any research paper so introduction of course uh, you have already given the various aspects of uh, outcome based learning so try to have uh, some specified objectives of it ma and uh, so after objectives okay you need before that you need to identify the gaps of existing aspect objectives follow some methodology either the primary study or as a test study and uh, so based on that probably uh, collection of data will be there and analysis will be there and major outcome will be there so just try to just follow these aspects uh, so that it will be a kind of a complete research paper otherwise just a more of explanation of some article or as something from a, over a, a second resources it will be so try to stick to the framework of a research paper ma okay sir okay sir okay thank you ma thank you uh thank you sir thank you ma'am sir shall we call the next participant please ma'am please go ahead
Okay, the fifth pre presenter is Rashik Ul Rahman VP from Central University of Andhra Pradesh. Can we have Rashik here? Rashik Ul Rahman VP? Yes, 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 I'm here. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, so please uh, share your screen. Sorry, could you please call the next participant? I'm finding some trouble for sharing the. Okay, uh, ma'am, we will go ahead with the next participants then, so that. Uh... Okay, sir. So the sixth paper presenter is Nidin K. Varya from Central Ocean's College, Elturut. Is Nidin sir here? Can we have Nidin K. Varya sir here? Yes. Hello. I think I'm ah, audible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, you are audible. You can start your presentation, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So, I think my PPT is uh, visible before the uh, chair. Yes, yes, sir, it's visible, sir. Please go ahead, sir. Please go ahead. So, okay, myself, Nitin, I'm from St. Eloysian College in Tirith. And my paper here is National Education Policy A Derivation Analysis Between Knowledge and Peace. It is focus on higher education policy framework. Okay. So, uh, as an intro, uh, uh, I compared with the earlier policies and the current NAP. And in my analysis, uh, the earlier policies on education in India provided more on quantitative outcomes than uh, to provide some solutions for the historical wrongs. But uh, National Education Policy 2020. It was a document that is uh, to constructively coordinate the demographic dividends of India and enrich human beings with the ideals of compassion, empathy, courage, creative imagination, etc. etc. So, what makes it MEP different? Uh, it is my introduction. It is a flexible document that uh, going towards a skillful population with a qualitative mindset. And my argument or my propositions or objectives are here is. I, uh, I put forward that is higher education has an imminent underpinning on resource utilization that directly affects it, that affects peace and happiness. And uh, my proposed, uh, the second proposal is that is the instructive and trans transformational nature of ideas related to higher education in NAP is to have a congruent and cogent effect on peace. That is the study proposes a qualitative framework and that is inclusive and insightful complication from especially from secondary data. Uh, so this sir, is Nitin sir, Nitin sir, sir. Uh, can you just briefly explain about the first uh, the the proposition uh, I didn't get because the higher education has an imminent underpinning on resource okay. utilization. Please explain. Is, uh, I my argument is in the proposals of related to NEP uh, the higher education in NEP. Okay, sir. The proposal related to higher education in national education policy 2020 is very much uh, useful for resource utilization and uh, it and in, then it affects the peace and happiness. That is uh, the proposal uh, in NEP 2020 uh, is affects the resource utilization or it makes the population more. Uh, independent or more so you mean to say, sir, you mean to say uh, sorry to interrupt you mean to say all the policies uh, so that affects the peace and happiness there is an impact towards it yes that, that's it in, uh, okay. specifically related to higher education proposal in NEP. fine peace and happiness of whom sir is it about the teachers students the management indian, or the indian business sorry the, sorry the india the indian population Sorry, Indian population. Indian population. Yes, sir. Indian population. Okay. Uh, probably if, uh, it would have done to assume like uh, any teachers, students, okay, that would have been much focused aspect of it. So that's okay. my uh, my perception, sir. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. Sir. Please go okay. ahead. Sir. Please go ahead. So uh, there are various uh, previous studies 
related to my study that is how education and happiness is related and i put forward uh, three important studies here and the first one is nikolaev and nikolaev uh, so nikolaev and rusakov where they suggest the evidence that people with higher education are more at, more at least uh, more happier and uh, they said the, the early mid 30 so in their study this happiness and educa- higher education and happiness is strongly correlated and the second study that, uh, that is the post secondary education shape uh, shape engaged and discriminating citizens uh, that understood the influence of education on earnings and prosperity that is being also related to happiness and the second uh, the third one that is the higher education level of higher income level and this being uh, the high, related to employed and this uh, higher levels of happiness and after controlling the income this labor status and other social economic variables it is revealed that education has a positive impact on happiness so these previous studies uh, help me to understand that there is a uh, relation between happiness education and happiness and that proposed to me to find uh, that the current nep proposals related to higher education that is an important relate that is a need relation with respect to happiness okay so there is already a uh, literature related to education happiness but my research gap is focused on the nep proposal related to higher education is contributing to happiness and peace that's it so for that i made a uh, common but derivation analysis Uh, it is actually used in uh, language studies linguistic studies and uh, pure sense studies so my study is if more people know more this search and if more people search more awareness and more people are aware more people then transmit then more people transmit more people understand and more people understand then more people will be happy then more the people happy more peace in the world this is my derivation analysis here so i am sum up this uh, analysis into three variables that is uh, the, the basic proposition uh, proposition that is amount and quality of knowledge and awareness and awareness and transmission of knowledge actually this quality and uh, and called amount and quality of knowledge relates to awareness and transmission these two both together uh, really, uh, aims or contribute to the happiness and peace okay sir and then i am uh, analyzing these three variables uh, in uh, differently so first thing this is amount and quality of knowledge and here the first slide i am proposing how the amount of knowledge is happening in nep so the first thing uh, uh, related to amount uh, i found gross enrollment ratio by 50 percentage so by 50 uh, percentage uh, by t- uh, 2035 i think uh, more population will get more knowledge and uh, this through well resourced vibrant and autonomous multidisciplinary institution so these two uh, you know, proposals about uh, gross enrollment ratio and more vibrant and bet- uh, better institution my first proposition that is more people know more knowledge and uh, here this is already in the nep document the, what do you mean by this uh, what i mean by this vibrant institution these three type of ex- institutions are the explanation to this vibrant institution and uh, next one is how the quality so uh, already i uh, covered uh, how the amount of part is uh, getting so now in this uh, one uh, and close so disclose how the quality aspect of the knowledge related to nep for this part i found that is the emphasis is on liberal art education here unlike the stem education that is science technology engineering mathematics of the liberal arts do not focus on a specialized subject here students not only learn about their civic responsibilities but also develop a creative way to solve their societal challenges so by this way i understood that the nep proposals not only contribute the amount of knowledge but also for quality of the knowledge so how uh, for this purpose i also made a uh, industry leader statement here 
uh, technology or amount of knowledge is also not also enough, but liberal art that is the quality of knowledge is also uh, essential. Then, uh, so the first uh, variable that is more knowledge and related to more understanding and more spacing. Then I came to uh, how uh, this awareness and transmission part of the second variable is happening. So here uh, I highlighted my argument in uh, red letter. Uh, so uh, the, here two parties actually uh, before NEP and uh, after NEP. So how NEP makes more awareness or how NEP proposes uh, transmitting more knowledge. So here uh, for that purpose, more higher education institutions, more multidisciplinary institutions, then here more faculty autonomy and more revamped curriculum pedagogy access, and uh, then more integrated uh, faculty and institutional leadership position through merit-based appointment. It was not uh, earlier that is inadequate mechanisms for merit-based career management, but NEP 2020 focused on more merit-based appointments. Then for quality and more transmission part, NEP 2020 focused on a national research foundation. And, uh, sorry to interrupt, sir. Kindly keep it brief. Okay, I make it. Sir. And and because the, uh, so others okay. also has to present. So kindly. Okay. Then next, uh, one of the important transmission parts and awareness part is light but tight regulation by single regulator. Then, uh, last but not the least, increased access and equity type uh, and more online education. So more awareness and transmission. Then I found uh, this all, this all uh, contributes to the happiness and phase. Uh, that is the relationship between happiness and knowledge is worth to know. So for this part, I also made a brief statistical analysis and I uh, studied world top uh, 20 uh, uh, countries, happiest countries, and to the best 200 universities. And my conclusion that the 150 out of 200 universities are in uh, world top uh, happiest countries. So for this world top countries, I uh, use the data of world uh, happiest population, sorry, happiest countries, and universities data, I use QS universities data, base of 2022. So these are the databases. And uh, and my conclusion is that is that uh, these characteristics uh, of this, uh, higher education proposals in uh, India, sorry, in NEP 2020, it will qualitatively shape the future generation. And here, these proposals are not going to be the earlier of policies of our earlier producers of unexplored and acknowledged and practice certificate bearers, rather torch bearers of development and thinking. So this, and finally, NAP proposes the idea that more knowledge among more pop, among populace, and this knowledge is not about amount, but also about quality. And by this way, happiness and peace in the world of uh, India. And I, I, I also know that there are certain limitations to my study, and there should be some future direction. Firstly, my the scope of this study is limited to two years from the NAP 2020. There should be practical offices and empirical uh, research yet to validate arguments presented here, but it is yet to come. And secondly, more primary data is required, uh, but uh, right now I'm, I couldn't more related uh, rely on primary data. So that's for the limitations and these are for future directions. And thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, so just one suggestion, probably in the future, you may just explore the, the primary research also. Uh, because uh, through that uh, statistically you can just validate whatever you're just proposing sir okay, okay thank you thank you sir thank you thank you sir so uh, uh, participants please kindly constrain your presentations to 10 minutes so let's have the seventh press paper presentation bushara shazni from aligarh muslim university delhi shall we have bushara shazni ah uh, yes ma'am Yes, kindly go on, ma'am. Okay, so please let me know whether my screen is visible or not. Yes, ma'am, go ahead. Ma 
Okay, thank you so much. So very good evening to all of you. So my uh, research paper is like a study of new education policy of India 2020. So this is a descriptive analysis in this particular study. I've tried to analyze the uh, new education policy 2020, whether it has overcome the drawbacks of earlier national, uh, sorry, new education, uh, earlier education policies, and what are the current uh, drawbacks of this particular policy, as well as the re recommendations for the future. So my name is Bushra Shazri. I'm a research scholar from Aligarh Muslim University. In this particular paper, uh, Ms. Rabia Khan, visiting faculty, has also worked with me. So uh, moving on to the introduction, so, now the root of education is right from educare. Educare, I won't uh, be wasting much of time on the, uh, on the uh, introduction. I'll uh, probably move on the uh, education system in India. So if I talk about the education system in, uh, in India, the education policies are broadly classified in India into three categories. One is the uh, British period, post-British periods, as well as the post-independent uh, independence period. Now, if I talk about the post-independence uh, period, the government of India has taken several initiatives to improve and to promote education system in our country. For that uh, particular uh, reason, for that particular uh, initiative, uh, uh, several uh, committees have been formulated in India. If I talk about the edu uh, University Education Committee, the Committee of uh, Midget, the Kutari Commission, uh, etc. Now, if I talk about the Indian education policies, before the NEP 2020, there were mainly three education education policies. One was in 1968, uh, 1979, and 1986. Now, uh, while going through the literature, uh, uh, while conducting this particular uh, or writing this particular paper, uh, I, I found, found that there were a lot of research papers uh, which read about the problems of Indian education system, highlighting the issues, the challenges of Indian education system. So in this particular uh, research paper, I've tried to uh, analyze whether those particular issues are being, uh, uh, you know, uh, solved by this particular uh, NEP 2020, or there are some other issues which are still left and we need to take up those issues in the future research uh, uh, policies, uh, sorry, future uh, education policies, etc. And what did the drop uh, policy? The, the objective of this... The objective of this paper is to understand the new education policy 2020. Uh, what were the major highlight? What are the major uh, drawbacks of education policy 2020? Uh, this is the first policy of 21st century for education, which aims to deal with the growing developmental imperatives of our country. Now, this particular uh, uh, education policy. If I talk about the NEP 2020, it is mainly focused on the quality education rather than the earlier policy was focused on the access and equity of education. Now, if I talk about any NEP focusing on the uh, school education, now this policy has almost covered all the aspects which were talked about in the uh, in the earlier research papers, which I gone to the uh, gone through during my literature review. The drawbacks which the earlier NEP policy was facing were, uh, uh, were are uh, almost overcome in this particular. Uh, uh, NEP 2020. Now, in the new education policy, the old format, firstly, which have, which we have almost talked about in uh, like a lot of uh, presentations, that uh, the earlier research format has been completely abolished. Now we are working on the uh, five plus. Okay, five plus three plus three plus four uh, format. The medium of instruction up to grade five, preferably till grade eight. Holistic program, uh, progress card, a 360 approach would be adopted in which project card will include uh, self assessment, uh, peer assessment, teacher assessment. The school uh, students will be taught a vocation of their uh, choice. School exams will be conducted for three levels one is for three, uh, class three, five, and then class eight level. Now, if I talk about the higher education uh, system, Now, higher education system is severely fragmented. Less emphasis on the development of uh, cognitive skills were given. Uh, these were the major uh, problems of higher education system in India. Okay. Limited access, particularly in socio-economically disadvantaged areas with few HEIs that teach in local languages, no limit, uh, uh, limited teachers were there, institutional autonomy was there in the higher education before the NEP uh, 2020. Uh, now, uh, 
after the uh, NEP, the few changes which can see, which we can see in the current system is moving towards the higher education system consisting of large multidisciplinary university and colleges, which at least one in near every uh, district the NEP NEP has. Uh, focus moving uh, towards a more multidisciplinary undergraduate program moving towards faculty and institutional autonomy and revamping the curriculum and pedagogies Sorry, you're not audible, ma'am. NEP for okay. Now am I audible? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Okay, NEP for teachers. The NEP 2020 covers the capacity of building of teachers, which is very essential for implementation of the policy. Now, policy provides for setting up recruitment standards as well as professional uh, development path for the teachers. Now, the minimum qualification of teacher would be four-year uh, integrated BA degree. These BA programs can be suitably adapted as one-year BA program to those who have obtained a master's degree in uh, a specialty and wish to become a subject teacher in that particular specialty. The teachers. are going to be provided with continuous opportunities for self improvement and to grasp the latest innovations and advances in their uh, professions now teacher eligibility uh, test which are uh, commonly known as tests will be strengthened further to inculcate the better test material in uh, terms of pedagogy and content the tests will also be expanded to cover uh, teachers all across all these stages including foundation preparatory middle and uh, secondary education now by 2021 A new framework for teacher education uh, is going to be uh, created, which has now already been cr uh, created. Now, what were the major advantages of this particular national education policy? Now, government was aiming to make the schooling available to everybody with the help of NEP 2020. Approximately two crore school students will be able to come back to the education system with this particular uh, policy for early up to age of eight. A national curriculum and pedagogical framework for early childhood care and education will. Uh, be designed and developed by the ncert one of the merits of 20 nep 2020 is to is the formation of national book promotion policy in india uh, the new plan focuses upon the setting up of a gender inclusive fund special education zone for disadvantaged regions uh, bal bhavans uh, will be uh, set up in uh, the districts of by 2020 in consultation with these teachers and expert uh, organization ncert scrt is the national council for teachers will develop a common national professional standards for the uh, teachers now uh, sssa or independent state school standards authority will be set up by the states or the union territories now according to the national education policy 2020 an academic bank of credit will be established the credit earned by the students which can now be stored when the final degree gets completed so multidisciplinary education research universities at par with iits and iims be set up in the in the uh, country the same list of accreditation and regulation rules will be used for guiding both the public as well as the private academic bodies uh, phasing out of college affiliation and autonomy will be granted to the colleges by the uh, 2030 the aim of this particular policy is to have at least a four year ba degree for joining the occupation of uh, teaching for making the students prepared for the future pandemic situations online academic will be promoted on a larger scale now what were the major drawbacks of this particular uh, new education policy or we can see the major things which this particular policy is unable to overcome so in the uh, national education policy 2020 the language is a main factor as there is a problematic teacher to a student ratio in india thus introducing mother languages for each subject in academic institutes is a problem now by uh, you know sometimes finding a competent teacher becomes a problem and now another challenge comes with the introduction of nep 2020 that is bringing study material in the mother languages now according to the nep 2020 students willing to complete it duration have to study for four years while one can easily complete his diploma study in two years this might encourage the people to leave the co 
course mid way because they will they'll rather get a diploma degree in two years so they won't be uh, you know completing the degree of four years that is again a major drawback of NEP 2020 according to the uh, national education policy the uh, private schools will be introduced with English at a much earlier stage than the school at a government uh, school again that would create a gap between the uh, students passing out from private schools and the uh, public sector schools or the government schools the academic syllabus will be taught in the respective regional languages of the government school student now this will again this is one of the major drawbacks of NEP 2020 this will increase the number of uh, students uncomfortable in communicating in English thus widening the gap between these sections of the societies now major recommendations uh, for the NEP 2020 would be though the policy is commendable but certain recommendations can be uh, added further due to pandemic there is a need for stronger and immediate access required for the online classes again for both the uh, government as well as the private sectors new ways of assessing students need to be implemented at this particular hour there should be proper programs for the old teachers as well now we are talking about the fresh teachers that they should complete four years of degree etc etc the old teachers should also have proper uh, programs so that they can also build up their skills as for the new era of online teaching well as we can already see that there are a lot of uh, old teachers which are unable to cope up with the online education system now pro, uh, proper implementation of such a drastic policy needs to be more keenly observed for more than authorities need to be added uh, for the so the new education uh, policy is welcoming change the chances sorry changes so made us something that many educators never saw coming the policy is based on the light but tight regulation has impacted the school and education equally the policy for the first time has rightly suggested the solutions for early uh, childhood and private uh, or and primary education the way this particular policy is going to treat students is commendable in terms of more focus uh, practical knowledge rather than mere load learning because this policy uh, also talk about vocational education for students at 10 uh, days program which again the students can uh, choose as for their um, interest all these measures will help the students to acquire a more holistic inquiry based discovery based discussion based and analysis based learning thank you so much uh, just one suggestion ma'am since you have just listed out earlier any piece uh, if you could have just uh, mentioned some of the lacunas pertaining to each NEP and if you could have just mapped how it's been just addressed in terms of NEP 2020. So that one uh, the slide, one or two slides could have been uh, made a difference also. But anyway, it was good. Ma. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'll surely keep these uh, suggestions in mind. Uh, for the sure, sure. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Now we have our fifth presenter here, Rashikul Rahman VP from Central University of Andhra Pradesh. Can we have Rashikul, sir? Sir, are you here? Rashikul Rahman VP from Central University of Andhra Pradesh, sir, are you here? Will you be able to yes. present? Yes, I'm here, but okay, I'm, okay. I don't know. I'm not able to share the screen. There are some technical glitches. I hope I can uh, do without PPT. Uh, so just okay? one request, you can just share it with the organizers. Probably they can able to just stream it. Okay, 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 okay. okay by the time we can go to the next part. Okay. Okay. okay, sir. So now let's uh, move on to the eighth presenter. Uh, Kiran Vishwanathan from St. Lucius College, Trishur. May I have Kiran Vishwanathan, sir, here? I'm here, I am Yes, yes, yes. Am I audible now? Okay, sir. Yes, sir, you uh, are audible, sir. Can Thank I share my sir. screen? Uh, sure, sir, you, you can. <clears throat> okay, uh, so a very warm good good, good afternoon to all. Uh, everyone gathered in this uh, virtual conference. So uh, I'm Kiran uh, from St. Aloysius College, uh, first time English student, uh, literature student. 
so my topic is uh, open and distance education uh, the upcoming changes in higher education sector under new education policy 2020 so uh, this article is more more like an essay uh, rather than uh, being a <clears throat> prime uh, being collected uh, from the primary data sources uh, it is uh, the references <clears throat> the references are uh, mostly associated with the secondary sources so uh, the major concerns of this uh, essay uh, deals with the distance education the online education the open universities and virtual classrooms and the multidisciplinary education uh, so uh, mr kiran kindly go to your uh, objectives objective part uh, the object the major objective uh, is the major concerns about this uh, article is nothing but uh, how this uh, distance and online education uh, or the open and distance learning would benefit the uh, learners uh, how it would benefit in uh, gross enrollment ratio <clears throat> so moving on to the next part um okay uh, moving on to the next part uh, yeah before discussing uh, what is open and open distance uh, learning uh, we should talk about the covid 19 pandemic and the uh, it, how the online education was uh, become very familiar for us <clears throat> so when the lockdown was announced due to the covid 19 we were all uh, forced to use this virtual classrooms and online platforms then uh, and thus we realized it's uh, important mr kiran so kindly uh, stick to the objectives and major findings and conclusion kindly stick to that okay okay so um the major uh, according to the new education policy we can uh, uh, the policy gives <clears throat> much emphasis for the uh, machine learning artificial intelligence and smart boards uh, computing devices and all that and uh, online platforms like diksha and soyam uh, uh, the students can enroll their names uh, <clears throat> parallel to their regular courses in this uh, soyam and diksha uh, for making uh, extra it would benefit uh, the students as well so uh, there are uh, the wide variety of educational software in all major indian languages will be made accessible to the dibyang students dibyang students is referred to those who are handicapped uh, and <clears throat> and the open and distance uh, open and distance learning in new education policy 2020 maybe uh, the word open uh, universities or the word open in open universities and the word distance refer to the non formal education system which is a parallel education to, uh, system to the formal education and it would be a best choice for those who cannot access formal education those who are uh, coming from the socio economically uh, backward community and uh, other other students as well or the despite of their age um, and um, it can be uh, understood that through uh, odl education can accessible to uh, brought uh, brought to more people uh, and it uh, i uh, we can assume or we can uh, be, we believe that uh, the gross enrollment ratio will be uh, increased by 2035 uh, to uh, from 26 percentage around 26 percentage to the 50 percentage according to the data provided by uh, many of the research papers and the articles and uh, <clears throat> yeah now now uh, the parallel to that open universities also have an admission system which is very uh, playable the operation of open and distance learning in regular institutions and learning opportunities through open universities encourage more people to enroll in higher education uh, it can be assumed that such a move will uh, bring drastic uh, change in higher education as the <clears throat> sorry uh yeah higher education as the student enrollment was slow when the distance education did not have equal importance with other regular degree courses 
So uh, the policy targets to increase the gross enrollment ratio by 2035, as mentioned earlier. And uh, another fact is that uh, when this, this is the third policy on uh, national education. Uh, then in, in 1992, when the NEP 1980 was, uh, 1986 was amended, every state had to start an open university and Indira Gandhi National Open University offered technical and consultancy support. Uh, but in 1991, you know, started a distance education council and in 2012, UGC withdrew it and uh, started distance education bureau. Uh, however, it was uh, it is doubtful whether the state have implemented them properly. Uh, sorry to uh, interrupt. I think you can just uh, go to the conclusion part. Can you keep it brief? Okay. So the uh, as we said earlier, the um, this essay mostly deals with the concerns, major concerns about how uh, distance, open and distance learning and the multidisciplinary education uh, benefit the students in future. So uh, expectations are high when a policy on education, when a policy on education is brought to India after 34 long years. And as mentioned about government of India has put forward a policy that gives equal importance to formal and not formal education. And it would definitely, uh, we hope it would definitely help a socioeconomic disadvantage group uh, in India. And it, we are looking forward to uh, that allowing open and distance learning to start in many education institutions. And uh, another factor is not to compromise on the quality of open and distance learning. And open and distance learning should be the same quality as regular courses. And for ODL to be successful, skilled and experienced human resources are needed. So it can be firmly believed that multidisciplinary education will lead to another revolution by uh, blending the science stream, max stream, and arts and humanities uh, uh, students can easily uh, develop their skills in logical thinking, critical thinking, communication skills, etc. So these are my, uh, my, uh, my few findings about this National Education Policy 2020. Okay, Thank yeah. You. Thank, thank you, Paul. Thank you. Um, can we have next participant? Uh, Dr. Anju, can we have next participants now? Uh, sure, sir. Uh, can we have Rashik, sir? Okay, so now we are moving on to the ninth paper presentation. Uh, Pragash Chandra Kasera from Bailasi PG College, Veer Bahadur Singh Purvanjal University, UP. May I have Pragash Chandra Kasera, sir? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you, sir. Please move forward. Uh, Ma'am, uh, is it visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Go on, sir. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Uh, Namaskar all of you. Uh, myself Prakash and Kasera from Biology PG College, uh, UP. Uh, going to present my paper titled Observing the Paradigm Shift in uh, Teacher Education via the Prism of National Education Policy 2020. Uh, the NEP 2020 uh, states that uh, teachers actually shape the future of our children and uh, consequently the future of our nation. But the ground reality is uh, very different from the image of uh, an empowered teacher as uh, the uh, 2012 uh, report by the Justice J.S. Verma uh, Committee it states that uh, the central teacher eligibility test of post qualification competency test reported in the study was unsuccessful by an average of 85% of teachers 
so uh, national education policy 2020 holds these inadequate conditions of teacher education recruiting deployment and service conditions accountable for the lack of teacher quality and motivation rather than blaming teachers for the poor learning results in indian classrooms so uh, for the uh, training of future teachers uh, nep uh, suggest uh, a national curriculum framework for teacher education 2021 uh, it has been created on the recommendation of uh, nep 2020 uh, it uh, uh, recommends that the minimal minimum degree requirement for teachers is a four years integrated beard and uh, uh, the national testing agency that is nta will administer appropriate academic and aptitude exams for admission to this degree the establishment of an education department and the operation of beard program uh, in conjunction with other departments uh, uh, has been mandated for all multidisciplinary universities. In order to improve the quality of their beard program, they will also conduct cutting edge research in a variety of educational areas. So uh, for uh, career advancement of teachers, a shorter post beard certification courses uh, will also be made available. Uh, and uh, all new PhD applicants will be required to take credit-based courses in uh, teaching, education, pedagogy, and writing related to their chosen PhD subject during their doctoral training period, including actual teaching experience obtained through teaching assistantship. For recruiting and hiring of teachers, uh, NEP 2020 recommends that the teacher must pass the TET, demonstrate their teaching abilities in a class, succeed in the interview, and be fluent in the local language in order to be hired in, in a private or public school. The NEP 2020 uh, uh, expands the scope of TET uh, to in, uh, include teachers in the new stages of schooling, uh, like foundational, preparatory, middle, and secondary. TET and NTA test results in the relevant disciplines will also be taken into consideration when hiring subject teachers. For career and professionalism in teaching, uh, a set of national professional standards for teachers, that is NPSD, uh, will be uh, created uh, in 2022. It's being uh, uh, created and NEP 2020 also mentions uh, periodic teacher audits uh, to uh, create a professionalism in teaching. Every year, school teachers are required to complete uh, 50 hours of CPD opportunities, uh, that is, uh, career and professional development, which can be fulfilled by participating in seminars or online teacher development programs. NCRT would uh, uh, suggest international pedagogical techniques for integration into Indian pedagogical practices through CPD. But there are some challenges to teacher education uh, under NEP 2020. Uh, the first uh, one is uh, the restricted availability of local schools for practice teaching is uh, one of the most important challenge in teacher training institutions. Uh, next, uh, uh, a program of action always accompanies new national education policies. NEP 2020 implementation, however, will be the subject of a different program of action. Throughout order to advance teacher education in the nation, the report suggests private philanthropic partnership that uh, would uh, uh, encourage privatization and privatization according to research encourages commercialization. Many diets and cities uh, in our country have been involved in elementary teacher education programs leading to DLA degree. The destiny of these institutions is not mentioned in the paper. How will the teachers who work for these institutions fare in the future? 
as suggested in the current framework uh, the student teacher will be assigned to an internship for several months but uh, how to make sure that uh, uh, intern get any form of exposure that occurs during the year additionally the quality of the school where the intern completes the internship affects the quality of the exposure internship programs are typically not permitted at good schools uh, these are some also the difficulties of teacher education under nep uh, but uh, it's given in this slide i'm not dis discussing here sir can uh, you keep it brief sir yes so uh, uh, some suggestions to improve the uh, nep 2020 regarding teacher education that uh, uh, digitalization is uh, urgently needed uh, because apprent apprentice teacher education has in some organization merely evolved into a formality. Uh, BA students uh, should be handled like mature students and more self-learning should be incorporated into the theoretical inputs. Less lecturing and more sharing during class time should be done to conduct curriculum. Andragogy and digigogy principles should be adhered to and to guarantee the quality of teacher education institutions, mandatory NAC accreditation is desperately needed. So uh, while I am uh, coming to the conclusion part, NEP 2020 is doing its best to entice uh, young qualified individuals to enter the teaching profession by eliminating the para-teacher system, Siksha Mitra, etc., relieving teachers of the burden of transfers and awarding scholarships to deserving individuals. A teaching career requires much more than this. Uh, According to NEP 2020, a teacher should be dedicated to his profession, children, society, and the country. He or she should also be a passionate, educated, hardworking, and pro properly trained. And only until teachers have universal respect and collaboration will this be achievable. They should be given the proper chances to advance their education and training. The knowledge of the student's social, economic, and cultural context should be required of all teachers. It is the responsibility of society, the system, and the government to establish settings in which teachers can be proud of what they do. It's not the case today. Teachers endure a variety of forms of humiliation in addition to having to scurry around for minor administrative jobs in government buildings. If even one teacher in the nation had to wonder for his pension after retirement, there should be outrage. And uh, by using new technology, following the regulations and political will, many embarrassing situations like above can be avoided. So uh, thank you all of you. Uh, this was uh, all about from my side about this paper. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, madam, can we have next one, next participant? Sure, sir. Uh, the 10th paper presentation is by Dr. Sri Anandan and Dr. Barani Priya from Sri Ramakrishna College of Arts and Science, Coimbatore. Um, how many more participants are there? Uh, sir, actually, we have two more, but earlier uh, one person had a technical issue, Rishi. So okay. he has sent us the PPT. Okay. Sure. So sure. totally four presenters. Okay. okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, can we have Dr. Sri Anandan and Dr. Barani Priya? Dr. Sri Anandan, sir, and Dr. Barani Priya, ma'am, are you here? Sir, can we go on to the next presenter? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Please, please go. Okay. 
Okay, thank you, sir. So the eleventh presenter is R. J. Madhi from Shangara College, Coimbatore. Yeah. Is J. Madhi, ma'am, here? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. I'm here. Okay. Yes, ma'am. You can go on with your presentation, ma'am. Yeah. Sure, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Good evening, Unta. Sir, good evening, sir. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah. Yes. Once again, ma'am. I'm sorry, Shara, I'm going to Yes. Yes. Few seconds, sir. Few seconds, sir. Okay, ma'am. As a time was missing. Yeah. So no. Ma'am, excuse me, ma'am. My slide is visible, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. It's visible. Go on, ma'am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once again, yeah. good, uh, good evening to all. Uh, my topic is I'm uh, first. I'm in intro for the, uh, to all. Yeah, I'm Jaymati from Shankara College of Science and Commerce, an assistant professor of PG and Research Department of Coimbatore. Uh, today, I talk about for the uh, uh, NEP related for the topics relevant to the side. I I take in the topic for the uh, study on modern tools of education. Uh, yeah, as a modern tools for education for mostly focused for the technology in dynamic, it keeps on improving that because of needs and dynamics, uh, technology and keeping on changes for that everyone persons for uh, more than relevant in the current pandemic situations for the um, virtual learning at the new normal basis and uh, 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 teaching or learning or uh, mostly students are uh, in focus in that. Uh, e-learning, e-technology, and uh, staff also for the uh, teaching, uh, sorry, teaching technologies for basing the uh, e-basis, you know, sir. So I can't, uh, I can't uh, take the uh, topic for relevant in this, uh, based in the NEP for modern tools of education is relevant in that. So uh, the technology exits uh, the, before the pandemic, but uh, Pandemic made it compulsory and gave it way to explore the new way in education for that. Yes, the policy drafts a vision of education for the new generation will help to build a self-reliant in India. You know, yes, uh, for the main focus of the purpose of education is that it's necessary for students to give a exclusive access to any inform as a digital hardware to be a smartphone only and smartphone and et cetera for that uh, computer or laptop. But uh, the today's scenario, the majority of students uh, from underprivileged backgrounds have limited or no access to devices, uh, internet in some cases, uh, even electricity, you know. So uh, uh, in my abstract is that the success of NEP 20 will depend on how will it is implement and how it includes underprivileged especially for the uh, area of the current paper focus on modern tools of education. Production is, is, is a fast and rapid uh, development in technology have made that this education easy to most view of the uh, terms of e-learning is a tool that can make the teaching learning process more students mostly focuses of centered uh, more innovative in more flexible and more focusly on online learning only is that online experiences uh, different devices for environments in that uh, teaching in that uh, for relating in the mobile phones labs etc for the only internet access based for that so the the tools can successfully be used as an alternative for is used for the face to face classes for interact with the teachers and uh, students 
and mainly my objectives is uh, two points i give it two points sir to study how technology is ruling modern modern education this is the first one and second one to study the several modern education tools which are dominating that education yes is the base for the focus is for the same line but i have a different way for learning in the different tools for using in the the study and my methodology is uh, was particularly uh, software will able in major indian languages will be accessible to wide ranges of users including uh, in remote area for uh, students uh, for especially my college this one um, suggestion ma'am when it comes yeah, to methodology, yeah, it, yeah methodology it's more of a statement all such software will be so try okay. to focus much on research methodology or as about the sampling or as any primary secondary study so those things it's better to be the methodology sure sir sure sir as uh, next my implementation as uh, nvp implementation is a uh, uh, 10 points are giving that sir uh, new tools for basis for the nvp implementation yes the first point is the technology oriented approaches in school level yes first of course of course, of course this is the introduction for this entry nvp the implementation process the first introduction in the school level is only you know the first is taught in that yeah one from what the indian school of syllabus and curriculum that will be really help school students develop an early adopt and uh, programming up app and development for regarding for only the first nep in implementation for the related in the technology oriented approaches in first in the school level and second was the key role of technology in educating students yes along the inclusion of technology is, is the new policy has scrubbed uh, that uh, 10 plus 2 structure of the school curriculum is uh, replacing it within a uh, uh 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 pattern you know sir there is a key role of technology as is educating for the system is uh, first is announcing for that any implementation and then video assisted and learning video assisted learning is it is easy yes mostly focused for the students and teachers are and this method is using for that yeah of course sir. the learning has more 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 people as classrooms in this place than video day is no longer a television on a trolley and become a build in a, into a class and uh, my fourth uh, technology is based for that that blockchain technology yeah so this is blockchain technology is short of tlt you know yes uh, the blockchain is bring so many benefits to education especially data storage only then only in this based for that uh, uh, the, the the technology basis based for that then the point of storage is very very important you know yes so the story is previously and then current years for that uh, uh, verify for this and uh, analysis for that and differentiate for that is useful for that the blockchain technology is very useful for that and and my fifth is uh, yes is very important for that artificial intelligence yes artificial intelligence is uh, is mostly the primary trend grow up more than 40 percentage of the so why is a trend blooming in one of the world's largest markets is ed tech this mostly it focuses for the ai now is and thinking is a usa ed market for that yeah my presentation panni irukken presentation koduthirukken bye 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 so is a blank leaf for the writing may not far behind of the uh, uh, automated granting of the students it's very useful for the building in the blank of questions so multiple choice for that automatic is a possible grading of that artificial intelligence is very useful for that and a system and is a many useful for that the system so the sum basis for that ed tech improvement in system programs and cs relevant for that the sum is from clear idea for that ed i mean the sum basis the apple is used for the science Uh, the smoothly the students uh, used for that uh, the uh, the simples ed uh, tech applies meaningful science based students technology based students engineering and the art for that uh, mostly students for using in that the ed tech uh, the stem programs uh, sir and, and also max students also is used for the real world problems is used in the hands of learning activities for this used in that the stem programs only so it's useful for the all area of the students for using in that the stem based programs is useful for the the sum ed tech of improvement of the uh, on learning activities for using for the everyone students yeah it's uh, very very important for the social media in learning for the seventh one yeah many educational institutes have started using 
Study, so sorry, social media as a uh, communication tool in which as the students interact with the uh, others easily for that the social media is very useful for the social media in learning. And my cloud computing, uh, cloud computing is mostly the students for using in that and the data space is useful for the staffs as teachers are using in that. C is computer science students, computer science staffs and IT students. And then the computer basis for the students as used for them, the high tech of education is that cloud computing. Yeah, yes, of course. To access a post where of educational materials from any device, uh, from anywhere for using for them, the technology based, the used for them, the cloud computing unlocked the door of high tech education is used for cloud computing. Yeah, the ninth one is speed to text options. Uh, uh, sorry, speech to text options. As a, what is the meaning of speech text to options? Yeah, as a smart assistant and responding to voice comments is only. Yeah, make them even easier for learning. And speech to text feature uh, coming with most devices makes note taking the writing even more comfortable for e fast paced. It's a majority of the devices, Apple's platforms are now coming with a virtual assessment of. Apps for using is Apple scenarios. So, sorry, uh, Apple series. The Apple basis for the base is mostly used for the, the speech to text option is only used in that. And last, my implementation is, is uh, 3D printing. Oh, 3D printing is known as uh, uh, also students is learn with a more tangible and physical experience for learning in the 3D printing. Yeah, of course, the idea has uh, object thanks to 3D printers. Uh, then why? The 3D printing students have argued shape to imagination. If any institution, 3D printers will only help students to analyze that creative ideas, have more hands of experience for that, is full for that everyone's students. But this then technology was uh, learning based for that e NEP is so implementation for that. And finally, my conclusion is uh, it's a very uh, simple then. Uh, these are growing the future trends you have placed for that then should keep an eye on in current year you know yeah the particularly e-learning and educational tool that not only increases the accessibility and convenience yeah of education uh, but also changes the learning behaviors and learners uh, desires for learning yes of course yes conclusion is my well, finally is a simple words of technology has provided the teachers and learners with a new improved way of integrating in the during the learning process only. Yes. Thank you, sir. Uh, ma'am, just this one, is my yeah, yeah. One just one observation, ma'am. I felt like much more depth was required and yeah, uh, sure. in the more of research perspective into it. It's more of the listing out the, all those tools, but from a research perspective, it's been already implemented somewhere. You can able to just quote the example, any yes. literature pertaining to all these tools. Because in foreign, they already use these kind of a tools. You can just pick a certain kind of literature from foreign perspective also. Uh, so it's better to bring in that research perspective so, so that it will be more authenticated. Now. So that's what I feel like. Okay, sir. Sure, sir. Sure, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Now we have the 12th okay. paper presenter here, Dr. Amit Kumar from Bhaskarajarya College of Applied Sciences. May we yes, have Dr. Amit Kumar, sir? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Um, okay, kindly go on, sir. Yes, ma'am. Just I am sharing my presentation. Um, just a minute. Just a moment. Maybe coming in a few seconds, please. Yes, yes. Are you getting the screen? Or should I try it once again?
Are you getting my screen? Hello. Uh, no, sir. It's not visible. Ah, uh, just a moment. Please give me one minute, please. Sure, sir. Sure. It is. It is taking a time to load actually okay. the presentation. Actually, I was connected to my laptop, but I don't know why. But my mic was not working on Zoom platform, so I shifted to this uh, mobile phone, and I'm not used to use it. Let me try once again, please. Uh, madam, if any other participants are ready, so that we can just go ahead, so that we will give some time to Mr. Amit sir. Yes, if you want, okay, because sure. I think. Good afternoon, you... all. I am Dr. Sriyanth from Acharya Bank Ambu School. My presentation is scheduled on tenth, uh, serial number ten. So, very very times there means sir. Please kindly allow me to uh, present my paper. Thank you. Hmm. Oh, okay, sure, sir. Sure, sir. Dr. Srinandan and Dr. Barani Priya from Sri Ramakrishna College of Arts and Science, Coimbatore. You may please go ahead with your presentation, sir. Yeah, yes, I'm ready. Yes, yes. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, is that uh, coming, ma'am? Is uh, visible? I hope it is visible. It's visible, sir. Uh, please go ahead. Yes, yes. Thank you. Um, uh, first of all, uh, uh, good afternoon, Madam Professor. Myself, I'm Dr. Sri Anandan, working as an assistant professor at Ajayi Bangalore School, Bangalore, and uh, one of the co-author, uh, Dr. Madhuri Priya. She is working as an assistant professor at uh, Ramakrishna College of Arts and Science, Coimbatore. So we are uh, presenting a paper uh, titled as an overview on systematic review on teaching and learning. Actually, this paper actually is based on some uh, past studies rather than going with a live uh, research oriented analysis. Uh, introduction, the teacher have, uh, will have significant impact on students' academic performance and some teachers are undoubtedly more uh, successful than others in the first thing is uh, educational uh, outcomes. Findings, the star, characteristics that are contributing to the teacher's effectiveness has been and will continue to be essential for the long-term goal of improving education. Due to this, there has been a lot of interest in the past several decades in uh, empirical studies of teachers' traits that may be related to a uh, teacher's uh, effectiveness. However, dispute the fact that the teaching is difficult and mentally taxing uh, re research, you know, research on teaching effectiveness had paid little attention uh, to inspire in the teacher's cognitive ability. So, uh, or uh, in the intelligence as it is a popularly known, the strong correlation between the intellect and the work performance in a range of different occupations, however, are being uh, highlighted by growing studies. It is vital to summarize and synthesize the available, available information on the relationship between the teacher's intelligence and the uh, teacher's effectiveness in order to establish a uh, certain based on the evidence and to guide the research on teacher's effectiveness as well as uh, educational practice. Compared to the studies on the teacher's intelligence, there are far more studies on cognitive measures, such as the outcome of basic skills tests or college admission examinations, which are frequently significant connection with the intelligence. Uh, however, there are uh, still many issues surrounded 
the proxies of uh, uh, teachers. Uh, uh, just one request, kindly keep it brief. Uh, probably uh, the objective uh, part, major findings and conclusion that will be good. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. So um, uh, my study is entirely based on uh, two aspects. First one is a uh, teacher effectiveness. So effectiveness in the context of uh, uh, teaching often related to the kind of actions that will uh, result in our uh, learning. Nevertheless, other authors have stated that the teaching is effective when it is facilitated in students' learning. In this article, researchers define that teacher effectiveness as the impact of excellent instruct instructions on the student's academic growth, creating, developing, modifying, and uh, negotiating the learning settings uh, where all students are supported in endeavors that have a fair uh, probability of enhancing the learning is what a uh, researcher defined as high quality teaching. And all evaluations tools for teachers undoubtedly have uh, limit, uh, their limits. Critics swarms against uh, using uh, value added measures because they would be excused by even though a, a recent systematic review suggests that sorting does not uh, appear to significantly skew effects or uh, estimates. Especially when researchers include several years of data in the analysis, assigning better performance uh, students to the teachers and the schools, they are um, more effective. The more successful teachers also create a greater uh, average uh, students' achievement development after the random assignment, further the advance, advanced by, the, by, by a study that used random assignments of the students to various teachers. However, falling to distinguish between teachers is one of the criti criti uh, criticisms uh, levied at observations. So uh, next uh, uh, main uh, heading is that a teacher's cognitive um, thing and their relation to the teacher effectiveness. The ability uh, to reason, uh, plan, resolve problem and thinking abstractly uh, a comprehensive complicated ideas, picking up new information rapidly and learn from the experience is far more general mental uh, talent known as intelligence or cognitive aptitude. Although there is still debate on the success of uh, organization of a cognitive talent, as a well known point, seems to them as being hierarchically arranged. This makes it <coughs> possible to conceptualize the intelligence in terms of both general cognitive ability uh, that uh, pyramids all the the intellectual tasks and uh, specific cognitive skills that are specific to each individual in the intellectual work. So in order to uh, sustain, uh, sustainably increasing the student's learning and accomplishment, effective instructors uh, must participate in uh, preparation of both the objective matter and the organizational design of their classes. On the other hand, the theoretical hypothesis regarding the link between the teacher intelligence and effective teaching as well as the meta-analytics uh, uh, findings regarding the importance of intelligence for other professions with a similar or even lower level of complexity than teaching. If I reinforce the uh, need for traditional research on how and whether the teacher intelligence affect the teacher uh, effectiveness. In recent years, the majority of the research have focusing on the indicators of teachers' cognitive ability such as their basic academic skills, reading, writing, and math related things, or other results on college entrance exams like CSR net, UC net, or measures that have strong association with intelligence. As a result, numerous studies have examined and the effects of various uh, proxies of cognitive disease. Uh, and a meta-analysis on the research uh, uh, based finding has been carried out. One of the meta-analysis that focusing on the verbal ability revealed that the effects of verbal college entrance exams result on instructors' effectiveness were not significantly in, uh, different from zero. Further, the meta-analysis that look into the account teacher score on the on a test of fundamental academic skills revealed as a marginally positive uh, relationship between the teacher effectiveness and the score on the fundamental skill set. And uh, the preceding research, particularly the meta-analysis meta uh, on indicators of particularly, uh, sorry, uh, uh, indicators of instructor cognitive ability uh, by statistically synthesizing the uh, study results. The meta-analysis can answer the question, uh, what is the evidence? So conclusion is that education is one of the most important tools one must have in their life. It is not the only wealth 
that cannot be taken from one person to another at the same time, it can be freely shared. In this paper, elaborately discussed various research carried out all over the world in the background of systematic review on teaching, pedagogy, and evaluation. At present, there are a number of ways to review the review and analyze the reachability of the teaching aids. The instructor or the mentor need to carry out the teaching and learning in such a way that no student should feel inferior or out of the class as a result of evaluation exam forms. People are taught how to perform better and what changes they would need to make in order to do so wise assessments and evaluations. In order to know the learning experience by the students, some kind of review should be undertaken and find the gap by doing experiments with various studies methods to uh, speed their recovery because there is always space for improvement and opportunity uh, for the progress. Uh, so the, these are the uh, references I used um, for my uh, past uh, data-based uh, uh, analysis. And uh, once again, I am thanking you, the organizers, to give me an opportunity to present my topic. Thank you. Uh, so just one suggestion. So yeah, yes, sir. sure, sir. please. Yeah. So uh, uh, regarding the structure of the paper, I could have just much uh, focused off it. Of course, I feel like that it's more of the old uh, kind of research papers analysis. I felt yes. like uh, so yes, it's yes. better to just. Uh, uh, Usually, okay, when, when it comes to research, whenever we are just presenting the papers in IMs or as when I sent a paper to IMs, they normally look from past 10 years, 15 years kind of uh, uh, the data, they normally look from that perspective. Uh, so that's the one thing. And uh, so one more thing you could have just concentrated on only one of the educational aspect, probably higher education or as such kind of thing. So much more focus it could have been. And of course, one more addition could be the NEP. If you can able to just link Anyway, okay, you can extract from NEP and you could have just uh, presented also. Okay. No, okay. These are my observations. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Any other inputs, please? Uh, Ma'am, can we just go to the next participant? Sure, sir. Uh, okay. Do we have Dr. Amit Kumar, sir, here? 12th paper presenter, Dr. Amit Kumar. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I am here. Um, okay, sir. Can, we can try if you can share your screen and I've mailed you the presentation also. Uh, yeah, sure, sir. If we can we have share. that. Yes, yes, yes. Please. Sure, sir. We will share the presentation from this side. Okay, okay. Then I will uh, present from my side. Okay, sure, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So uh, the paper of my presentation is New Roadmap for the Academic Excellence through the Prospective Binary Neck Accreditation. And I am Amit Kumar from uh, Associate, uh, from the Associate Professor of Department of Electronics Science from Bhaskacharya College of Light Science. Ma'am, please, I, if I can get next slide, please. Ma'am, may I get the next slide, please? Yes, sure, sir, sure, sir. Yes, ma'am, yes, Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes.
actually uh, you might not have uh, downloaded it so it is taking a time to get downloaded Actually, everything works, but when it, it is required the most, it stops. <laughs> I don't know. Why, yes, sir. But... Yes, sir. We are trying on our <laughs> end, sir. No, no. I know because you are online also and downloading takes much time. I can understand that. You are online also. Na? You are on a video call and downloading then takes time. The same thing happens with me because my mic just suddenly stops working. I don't know why, but my laptop mic is not working. Otherwise, I would have presented from the my from my laptop only. I'm sorry, sir. Sorry okay, to all the okay. participants. <laughs> yeah, it's not a problem. Yeah. So basically, uh, what I wanted to say through this paper was that uh, there is a recent uh, draft which has been shared by NAC and uh, from uh, it is it was written by the uh, present NAC, honorable NAC chairman professor Bhushan Patwardhan and its name is about is reimagining assessment and accreditation in higher education in India. So basically what they suggested is they are going back to the binary uh, accreditation policy and uh, they are suggesting that uh, uh, it, in place of having the graded accreditation to the institution they will be just focusing on whether the institute is accredited or it is not yet to be accredited so i thought uh, it will be uh, and it has been announced in uh, in this month only on the 11th when uh, professor patwardhan was addressing uh, a national state level conference on uh, in the University of Mumbai, and there they uh, shared their views, and I I tried to review that and uh, analyze what is the uh, what is the need of going to the binary accreditation. So some of the points that uh, I studied about uh, through their uh, presentation from from the presentation of NAC uh, uh, Honorable NAC Chairman and from other sources that I compiled and written on a, in this paper and then I presented it to the conference chair. And let me go through this. So basically what is a NAC? NAC is the um, accreditation institution which helps the volunteer institute to assess their performance. And this is how the NAC accreditation uh, goes about. And um, all institute, basically what NAC was what the government was suggesting is that uh, they should be uh, uh, means every institute in India should be accredited uh, by the UGC through NET in the middle of this year only. But what happened was that uh, only one third of the institutes are got uh, accredited and not uh, means the, the aim of having all the accreditation all across the India was failed. So, so the policy makers who sit it together and they must have thought what, what went wrong? Why the institutes are not coming with the willingness to, uh, to get accredited? And uh, because of that, uh, uh, means they are not, what, what are the reasons that they are not coming? So um, through this slide, I basically presented what are the uh, major outcomes Excuse that me, are- sir. Sorry in, to yes, interrupt. Is your yes, PPT visible, sir? Yes, sir. I, it, uh, yes, ma'am, it is visible to me. But to, when I say change it only, then change, ma'am, please. Okay, okay. So, 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 uh, okay, basically, okay, sure, yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. So, uh, basically, uh, what is the aim of accreditation? It it gives the affirmative indications to the general public. It it gives SWOT analysis to the institute. It enhances. It basically, it aims to enhance the teaching quality. It 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 provides the various career opportunities to the learners. And uh, it gives of um, 
a ranking so that uh, the foreign institute foreign universities may have the access means a uh, uh, a qualitative access of the institution from where the student is coming to their universities for the higher education. Next slide, please. And uh, what are the requirement of having this accreditation? Basically, it requires a lot of documentation. It, it aims to bridge the curriculum gap. It monitors the student performance. It monitors the faculty performance. It study the resources from where the course is coming and how the teacher is working and how the teacher is delivering their, uh, using their resources. So NAC, NAC requirement requires all these documentation to be there. It, it focuses on the learner's feedback. It, it evaluates the course. It monitor the student's record. Then, uh, it, it also uh, uh, means uh, uh, monitor the collaboration and financial matter. All these comes under the no NAC documentation. So NAC documentation is, next slide please. Uh, so NAC documentation is very tedious process. And uh, many of the institute found that it requires a lot of, a lot of energy for, uh, uh, from the institution to get uh, NAC documentation complete. And not only that means, all the it requires the data from all the five years and making that data maintaining that records is not a easy task and the, um, basically what is the aim of the institute basic basic aim of the institute is to educate and NAC is going in other in another direction where the documentation takes uh, a major role so this is the main feedback uh, this is the main uh, means uh, hurdle that i think the most of the institutions are not willing to participate in NAC accreditation. And uh, because of that, uh, the binary accreditation is proposed by the NAC, uh, Honorable NAC Chairman, and uh, through this uh, draft policy. And according to that, the basic issues of having the accreditation being, means basic problems can be, uh, can be, uh, can be eliminated by making a uh, accreditation, binary accreditation rather than graded accreditation. Today, we have seven grades there. And people used to uh, score much um, uh, means qualitative, quantitative uh, analysis is there, and it basically ranks the one institute to the another. It it gives the gives the uh, uh, edge to the uh, one institute, and on, on the other hand, it gives the means it rank it gives a ranking kind of a thing. So through the binary accreditation, they are proposing that. Uh, we will be uh, means uh, the NAC will be uh, accrediting the institutes also, but uh, only the accreditation whether it is accredited or not, and they will be grading the courses rather than the institutions. So this is the main aim, main uh, proposed uh, means binary accreditation. Next slide, please. Uh, just one request, sir. Kindly keep it brief. Yes, yes, sir. I'm just concluding. So what I studied uh, through this uh, proposed accreditation is that every college has to be accredited and every college has, will be autonomous according to NEP 2020 and assessment will be graded, uh, will be grading as constituents and program will be anticipated outcomes and uh, current grading system may be followed, but uh, it, is, it, it will be for the courses only, not for the institutes and creation of the manuals and evaluation discipline based programs may benefit the existing specialty in manuals and it will be advised that the units and programs will be graded other than accredited accrediting the institutes the creation of effective and efficient rubrics uh, for the assessment and accreditation and grading is required in order to uh, put these recommendations into the practice the purpose of education must be must come first in this rubric, followed by the HIE to HIE to uh, their programs in terms of both gender education and specialized education. Next slide, please. Ma'am, next slide, please. So um, I conclude by saying that this white paper, which has been prepared by the NAC, as started that uh, the system of assessment and accreditation in India must be aligned with the NEP 2020 and the sustainable development goals by 30, 2030. As a result of this statement, it is possible that the NAC and its accreditation processes 
will go on a significant overall change in the years to come. And next slide will be the references that I've used for this study and in preparing this uh, document, this paper. Thank you, Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Vishnan, sir, can we have the next presenter, the last presenter for the session? Yes, ma'am, please. Okay. May we have Dhyanir, sir? Dhyanir, sir, from Banariaman Institute of Technology, Erod. Dhyanir, sir. Ma'am, is my voice audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Kindly go on, sir. So, welcome everyone. And my paper title is about students' impact and quality of online education, a virtual lesson. So, I'm Dhyanesh and I'm from Banariyama Institute of Technology and I'm a UG student, second year, pursuing computer science and engineering. And my co-authors are Mr. Praveen Kumar R and Mr. Poova Sanis. So, let me go into the presentation. So, the main abstract of the presentation is about uh, about the online education and its impact. The aim of the study is to identify the factors affecting the student satisfaction, which has been uh, the basics of online class impacts that has been brought into effect after the COVID-19. So as my as per my studies, there are three things that are really important to have a more, more, more successful and uh, impactful online class. So the three, the three things are quality of instructor, a course design and promote feedback sessions. So quality of instructor in the sense, uh, not like uh, traditional classrooms, online classes needs more public speaking skills as an instructor. And there should be a lot of knowledge should be known by the instructor. And he should, uh, he or she should have a good attend, good attention with the students. And uh, these are things that should be a uh, really important while going on to an online sessions and course design. The course designs are really important during the online class, the structure of the course should be really important. So like people can know how, what we are going to learn and uh, what, what is the structure and they can easily learn from the structure of the lesson and promote feedback. There should be a lot of feedback sessions after each day of the classes so that they can improvise each day on the online classes. So the management should really keep these things in mind for good and impactful online classes. So some of the pros of online classes in the sense, uh, online class tears down, we can Learn uh, from Mr. Dhyanish, uh, kindly stick to uh, the objective part and major findings and conclusion. Yes, sir. So methodology in the sense, what can be done for a most impactful online classes in the sense like lecture-based learning, inquiry-based learning, and project-based learning. These things should be gone in a queue manner. So first of all, lecture-based sorry, sorry lecture-based learning in the sense they should adapt. So first of all, uh, have a traditional classroom teaching model. So like. Uh, other than going to PPTs, they can go some virtual design classroom, like, like classroom boards and writing surfaces on the screen so that it can do some attention on the classroom teachers and inquiry based learning. Inquiry based, there should be a lot of questions should be asked by, from the students and, as, and also from the faculty sides. And there should be a lot of uh, challenges should be given to the students so, they, so that they can get at more attention and they will be really interested in it and clearing the ideas and project-based learning. So each one should give, be assigned with a lot of projects so that they can gain more and more knowledge and also their skills on that on that project will also be increased so that they can be get ready for industrial purpose, industrial level. And these things should be done so that they can be comp they can solve complex problems, um, questions and also challenges so that they can get into the industry with a very well knowledge skills. And these are things and what are the things that has affected before and after online classes given sir? so students need to go through physical classrooms there will be a lot of time for traveling and there should be a lot of they will get some they will get tired a lot of things are like that and there will be limited learning experiences that there will be not much experiences so only the faculties which what are the knowledge they gain that can be known by the students but not uh, these things will happen in the on online classes so students can pick the faculty Whichever they like, they can go and search on internet, whatever things. There is nothing less in the internet now, nowadays. So these things can be done and they can get knowledge from various peoples. So various peoples around the world, they can share ideas. They can get the ideas of knowledge. So this will help underdeveloping nations to get more ideas how developed countries works and works very well and how we can improve. So that's it, sir. 
uh, yeah, uh, just uh, some of the suggestions uh, starting with the title. So kindly just uh, rephrase it. And uh, before presenting, so go through some research papers because you find a lot of research papers in this area. Uh, so the structure, okay, uh, stick to the structure. Let it be the introduction, literature review, identify the gaps, uh, the methodology part for that matter. Since it's more of a primary research, you could have just done a kind of uh, any uh, research a quantitative aspect of it and of course you can just stay able to come out with the findings so that would have been much more research perspective that's what i just felt like but it was okay thank you thank you sir i hope that we have come to the conclusion of the first session paper presentation and uh, is there rishik sir remaining here hope he is not here so now, okay, so thanks to the respected scholars for making us feel enriched and thanks for sharing such immense knowledge with us. Thank you, Professor Vishwanathan, sir, uh, for your wonderful suggestions and feedback, which penetrated to our soul. Thank you, sir. Now, every beginning has an ending. So I request uh, Ms. Priya, Assistant Professor, Department of Commerce, to propose vote of thanks. Over to you, ma'am. Before before letting Ms. Priya to express a lot of thanks, uh, let me uh, express our deep sense of gratitude to Mr. Vishen sir. Thank you so much, sir, for uh, kindly accepting our invitation at the short notice. And you have been here for the last couple of hours, reviewing each and every uh, paper rigorously. So we appreciate your time. And uh, thank you so much for your for your efforts today. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I I catch I will catch up with you later. Sure, sir. By all means. Thanks to all the organizer and chair. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Good and all you. the participants. Respected Professor Vishwanar, MR Assistant Professor, Center for Management. Center for Management Studies, Presidency College, Bangalore, Chair of the Session, Paper Presenters from different colleges and dear participants. I am honored and lucky to have the opportunity to give a vote of thanks on this special day. I would like to thank Professor Vishwana Vemma for chairing the session and sharing the knowledge with us. Thank you so much, sir, for your guidance, suggestions to the paper presenters. I am sure that your guidance will be real support for the their betterment. Next, I would like to thank all the paper presenters from different colleges in and out of Kerala who took initiative to contribute their ideas and concept on NEP 2020 for our national conference. Special thanks to all the participants and the team behind the program. I would like to thank you again for making this event a great success. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. By that, we come to the official conclusion of the paper presentation session. Thank you, Vishnu sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Hope to see everyone tomorrow.